Wah. See ya. What's up, guys? Oh. Welcome to the uh, the podcast. Schlet. The podcast is that like, ever. Is that a reference I'm not getting? See yeah, ya. yeah, it is. <laughs> My stomach hurt. My stomach hurt. My stomach hurt. Jesus. What's up, guys? How you been? We've been good, I think. Gregicus, Mongicus, Maximus, what's up? I am. Hold on. Yeah, we need for the activation. It. Oh, mogging. Okay, I'm clearly not mogging today. No, I, I'm that guy. I mean, look at look at look at the job. physiognomy here. The physiognomy check is. I failed on mine. I have to. Uh, I have to make a uh, death saving throw. <laughs> Do better next time. <laughs> uh yeah, we're back for another episode. Once again, without a camera person. That sounded like something from like a, like a Sprite commercial right there. <laughs> it's a Coke bottle. <laughs> You're drinking Coke, nigga. I'm getting Mexican Coke. You got them? Yeah, they're at Publix. Hmm. Well, Publix I guess I'm going to Publix later. States, by the way, but you know, anyway, they, I think they sell them at Target too. Uh, you know, I found like a a brand of root beer where they had like only uh, natural ingredients, and I was gonna like order like a big case of them and bring them in. Mm. You can get um because I've seen also at like Walmart at least I've seen that they sell uh Pepsi real sugar like only cane sugar at Walmart yeah I caught wind of this by looking online but have you seen it in Walmart see I went to Walmart and I didn't look but I know they like it said they had it in stock at that Walmart so my guess is yes though like you know I mentioned before I went to Walmart. And, you know, there, it's everything's so unorganized there. So who knows? Maybe they just track it as in stock. But, you know, honestly, it should be. It should be. Should be meaning as in should be like, I'm sure Look, that it'll be there. Or should be as the in Pepsi they ought brand, to have it. I don't think the Pepsi brand is going to let this slide. You know, not having it in stock and then saying it's in stock. Those Pepsi tycoons are no business. Exactly. Or wait, that's not the phrase. They're no business. No business? They're no business. <laughs> They're no bitches. I don't know. No, there's like another. No, there's joke. no monkey business going on at Pepsi. That's well, Sprite. You might have some, but not not Pepsi. Yeah. Exactly. What brand owns Popeyes? Uh, <laughs> I think that's Pepsi. Really? It might be. Hold on. What? You're saying Pepsi owns Popeyes? <laughs> uh you're saying you know, the ones that provide the soda for them is what you're saying, or you're saying they literally own Popeyes. Well, here's the thing. I got a buddy of mine that's working at a, I'll leave it open, but one of those uh, big soda tycoon places, right? And when he was getting ready for like the interview or like the orientation or whatever, they specifically told him, hey, so you can't order from these places anymore because Pepsi owns them or Coke owns them or whatever. Oh, but is, does it mean like they serve their drinks there or like literally these like brands own these restaurants? I'm not sure. Because on one hand, no, like it was it like this <laughs> an executive position? No, it, it was wasn't <laughs> entry level. Uh, technically, yeah, it was his first job at the the place. So yeah, was it corporate or was it just like a like a no. like a manager at like a fast food restaurant? No, it's it's like. Uh, like working at a warehouse. So it's like in between both. Nobody knows this man works at a warehouse. He works at like, you know, behind closed doors. Like the public doesn't see this man. What the fuck? We were talking about it. We're like, yo, so if we go to like KFC or something like that, are, are you going to get like shot once we walk out? Like <laughs> what's, what's going to happen? But they were like, yeah, you can't go to KFC. You can't go to uh, other stuff. But I was going to say. Do you think they say that to the black people that apply? That's a good. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Are the chicken brands like is it monopolized by, by one soda brand? No, but I'm saying is it discrimination to tell a black man that comes for the job that, you know, you cannot eat here? That's a good question. Should be some sort of like law on that, you know, race law. Somebody should do like like a like a hidden camera thing and apply for <laughs> one of those jobs and then try and pulling like, oh, it's because I'm black. It's discrimination, <laughs> bro. 
<laughs> and see what happens. What you mean I can't eat at KFC? What you trying to say about me? Why are you saying that? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, though, I'm not sure if it's literally just, okay, we have ties with this company or we own this right. company. Because on one hand, uh, it would make more sense for it to just be, okay, we have an, a contract of this company, so you know, don't do that. But on the other hand, these soda companies get subsidized so much and have so much market power that I wouldn't be surprised if they just own whole fast food chains at this point. Mm -hmm. That's right. That makes sense. Now, yeah. I again, I don't know if the Pepsi's at Walmart actually, but if I were to say, you know, I would say it's supposed to be there. Ideally speaking, their app is right and their website's right and it's actually there. And usually it's correct, especially for things that come in like these big boxes as opposed to like these small little packages. So you mean like like what, like the 16 case back box or whatever? Uh, well, you know, I'm just yeah, uh, I'm saying if there's like a, if there's a pack of them, you know, it's something that it's harder to just take out of the store as opposed to like a small little bag of like, I don't know, macaroni or something, you know. Mm. Now, are these cans or bottles? These are cans. Which That's bottles are better? I know. So the Coke is better anyway. It's the better choice. The Mexican it's Coke. glass bottle, bro. I'm just saying the the fact that it's sugar. Yeah, exactly. It's a glass. It's a glass bottle, not even plastic. But I'm saying the fact that it's cane sugar is still better than the high fructose corn syrup stuff. I'm saying it's a step in the right direction. Yeah. The estrogens that come from the inside of the can and the lining and all that, you know, that's not exactly what we want. But you know, still, it's still better. There's not all this like hidden starch. That hidden starch. Them their starches, they'll yep. get you. I'll tell you. That's true. What? What? But yeah. <sighs> so, I have news. I have good news. The gospel one could say. Mm. I have okay. recently gone on a great uh, hajj to uh, the beacon of Shit, I can't say that. Hold on. Let me think of a word that isn't uh, a slur. Oh. <laughs> the beacon of burritos. Wait, no, that's not accurate. Rice burritos. and beans. There we rice go. Rice and beans. Yes. You went to the beacon of rice and beans. Yes. Did you go to Taco Bell or Mexico? I went to Miami. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even realize. Yeah. Yeah. Nice so, city. Uh, you saw some uh, baddies. Yeah, you know, here's the thing, too. I was thinking about looking back on my great travels as I was traveling onward back to my abode so far and far away, which Jesus Christ, that was that was a fucking that was awful. But anyway, I did not see. I saw like exactly one, exactly yeah. one. Did the rest have like BBLs or what was it? Hold on. I didn't finish my sentence. Oh. Exactly one. Uh being that one could be associated with a high fructose food uh object you're saying you only saw one fat chick no oh. i saw exactly one winged insect that goes on flowers oh you saw not even one <laughs> no <laughs> Hold on, i'm gonna keep trying this I saw exactly one bundle of sticks. Oh, wait, but like one that, uh, wait, so what does that have to do with the bee? It, it was a butterfly. Oh, I see. Yeah. That makes a lot more sense. When I'm does, not a <laughs> you know, is that kind when of a slur? Cosa. Yeah. Well, I think it probably is, but you know, does I remember seeing, if it's Spanish. Do you think it does? Cause I wanted to make this joke where I say a lot of them. Because I, I remember seeing. It's not in English. You're probably. I'm just going to go ahead. So I saw this guy, like you know, he was like talking on some like talk, I don't know if it was like a like a lot. It was like one of those studio shows or something like that. I don't remember the exact setting, but he was just like naming them like list by list. He's like una mariposa, mariposón, maricón. <laughs> you know, almost <laughs> sexual. Oh, he went for the classic. Yeah. Um, what was the I context of that? I don't even know, man. I just saw it on Instagram. <laughs> I was just scrolling and then he just starts saying them and l l just a bunch of them. It was, it was actually very funny. Um, you know, it's not often I say, I'm glad I got back on a social media app, but I'm kind of glad I got back on Instagram. It's so much yeah. better than when I first got on it. 
Yeah. So w- w- what are you saying? You saw a a a male presenting one of those, like that one that like wants you to still think it's a man, or one that wants you to think it's not a man. No, no, no. So what happened was, I went to one of the many learning institution learning and inst- jesus i wish i remember that thing but anyway i went to one of the many learning institutions and i saw an individual with like neon purple hair so even then was this like it's jeffree a- star no 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 no. i only saw the hair and like the the like skinny body so even then I, it could not even be one i could have just been assuming because like a lot of people i mean it's, i i don't condone you know dyeing your hair like re- ridiculous colors like that it's kind of funny but usually that's a sign of when I'm at Iposa, but there's a good chance it even wasn't. So I could have went my entire trip there without seeing one, not even one. Yeah. Which is impressive. Because like I went to all like the 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 main areas too. So, so I mean that this, alone. You only saw this from the back. Yeah, it was like as we were like leaving the so area. You got like a glimpse. Yeah, so I mean, I could still be wrong. I could have been exactly zero, which I can't say that about many other places. So what does this have to do with the baddies? Were there baddies? Oh, yes. Yes, there were. Through the roof. In abundance. Yeah. See, the thing is, I didn't even get to go to like the beach or anything like that. Uh, or like the main beaches. And this was like uh, last week. So this was like prime time spring break. But there's like one road that you take uh, that's like... Ooh, like right next to the beach like you have like some buildings in front of it but like it's one block down is the beach basically and it goes like pretty much up the entire like coast of the city and like every other block you see some baddies bro Mm -hmm. it's great (laughs) to quote myself bitches to the brim (laughs) exactly to the brim like an Mm -hmm. overload one could say right uh you know it's not necessarily snowing is it it's uh, what would you call it it was actually pretty snowing. It was snowing decently. Oh, it was snowing as well. But like, it was not a you... blizzard. Okay, but it, it was a decent, decent snowstorm. Mm-hmm. What would you call this weather event? Just a snowstorm. <laughs> like you know when like snow falls and like it mm-hmm. starts mixing in with the dirt. Ah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's like it's like that, right? But you yeah. know, on topic with that, you know, there's a uh, there's this thing about black people having uh, these showers, like you know, the the, the way that they're kept, kept like you know, showers, like, right? <laughs> no, I just mean like literal, like their actual showers at home. Uh, oh, well, I'm just yeah, saying, that's what I meant. Right. <laughs> so I'm just saying, like you know, it's it's apparently this notorious thing where you know they use a lot of these like oils and stuff and like you know whatever on their skin, you know that they don't really wash out of the shower, so it leaves it looking like black or like you know dirty in the actual shower. It's like this oil that you can't remove at that point because it's like so so seated in there. You know what I mean? Um, you mean so like some... off their body or? Well, see, that's the thing. So, uh, you know, it's like they, it's like these products that they're using on themselves. And so somebody told me, you know, it's like, you know, uh, I, well, first of all, I had like a roommate who was, uh, you know, an African-American who, you know, did have a bathtub like that. I was going to move into his room. I didn't realize that the bathroom was so bad. I was like, you know what? I want that room. It's, it looks bigger. So I'm like, let me remove all my stuff in there. But then I look at the bathroom. I'm like, this, this is disgusting. This is terrible. Um, <laughs> so I'm like, no, never mind. Don't give me that room. I'm like, I, I talked to the manager lady, it's a woman, and I'm like, you know, hey, what's it, what is this? And she's like, well, you know, you, you know, you, you didn't say you wanted them to clean it first. So you, you wanted to not have a waiting period. So here it is. I'm like, look, you know, I, I can't do this. You know, I can't have this. And she's like, well, you know, your other option is just staying where you are. I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't know about this. You know, I was, I was already so set on having that room, but I'm like, you know what? It's not worth it. I don't want that bathroom. It's disgusting. I'm not going to be able to clean that, you know? Um, and, you know, there was a guy that moved in after me, a Brazilian guy. They had already cleaned it by the time he moved in. But he told me, like, you know, that's disgusting in there. And I'm like, well, you should have seen it before. I show him a picture. He almost throws up. Uh, <laughs> needless to say, this is a, a whiter Brazilian man. Uh, but, <laughs> you know, the, the point being, you know, I had a, I had somebody tell me about this room that, you know, apparently there, there are these like videos on this or like stories about this. Um, you know, well, first of all, the person that told me said it was actually like, uh, section eight housing, but there was just sort of an assumption, you know what I mean? <laughs> like as to what kind of people live in those houses. Uh, um, and <laughs> so basically I made the joke. I said, well, you know, it might be the matter of like, you know, they're, they're rubbing their skin off in the shower or something. 
Well, you know, dead skin cells come off. I'm just saying, but you know, if, if you were to think about it, like, you know, do their skin cells come off the same as ours, right? I would assume, I mean, <laughs> in the process of coming off, I would assume. Well, yes. I'm not saying the coming off part. I'm just saying in the same, you know, color, you know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> that's a valid question. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you did, you did mention the, the whole, you know, snow with the, with the dirt in it. So, you know, you just, <laughs> that's why I thought of dirt, you know, but <laughs> so wait, how, what did the bathtub look like? If it was oh, that okay. much, you get a guy like, so it, like all the cracks right in between the tiles were the biggest problem. It was like, they were just so filthy. Like the, it, it was just like, it wasn't, it didn't look like mold, but it looked like, um, I mean, it's almost like somebody had like a, a big instance of diarrhea that got wiped away, except for the cracks still had it in there. It's like somebody just sprayed it or something, you know, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was like brownish. It was like brownish and blackish. It was kind of just, you know, that's why I said that, you know, that's why it seems like this just is such an appropriate joke to make about it because that's what it looks like, you know? Jesus. <laughs> we're starting off this show strong. You know, it's only <laughs> 15 minutes into the show. This is where we're at. You know, it's just the norm on the podcast ever, honestly. Correct. Which therefore makes it the norm of all podcasts. Well, yeah, because it's the podcast ever. This is the podcast mm-hmm. ever. So moving on from that <laughs> grisly imagery. Uh, uh, it was a nice area. Uh, it's pretty big, too. Like I was checking out uh, some locations that were like uh, further away from the touristy areas. And it takes like a good like 40, 50 minutes to get from like one side to the other, which is a. Uh, it's usually never in my area. It's usually never exactly that unless you're going to a different part where it's technically a different city, but this is pretty consistent. Also, uh, people don't know how to drive there at all. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a but, common thing in Hispanic areas. You know, I, I mean, you just know, seriously, if you have an accumulation of like Puerto Ricans or like other kind of Spanish people, but especially Puerto Ricans, you know, it's just, man, it's, they don't drive well at all. They got this music blasting. They're making these sharp turns. I mean, they're they're really just speeding all the time and not even like in a, in a sort of way where they're in the left lane doing it. They just do it wherever on the road. It's kind of insane because I don't know if the bad drivers make the roads awful or if it's the fact that the roads are already pretty shit to mm-hmm. begin with that like facilitates even worse driving because at least where I am, maybe it's a norm like this. I don't know. Uh, in Miami, like the roads are like super thin or like the lanes are super Mm. thin given like the uh amount of people that are there so like a a three-lane road where i'm at is like pretty decent you've got enough room where like if i don't know i've seen this happening before like if you were swaying within your lane uh you wouldn't be going into other people's lanes you'd still be within your lane pretty Mm -hmm. consistently whereas in miami like you can't move like an inch pretty much without (laughs) getting in somebody else's lane like somebody would be passing us and then I'd be like, oh, shit, is this guy going to fucking skin us? Like, what, what's going on here? <laughs> right. Uh, but that compared to the fact that the roads, dude, there's so much fucking construction there on the highways in particular. Like, I think the night I was going in, uh, I started seeing people fucking weaving and like moving in between lanes and shit like they were motorcycles and actually pulling it off. So, I mean, at this point, I don't even know if that's bad driving anymore. Maybe it's just good driving given horrible circumstances. But uh because the roads they have different roads for different shit like express lane and all this and all the other and they'll just close off entire roads to like main highways around the city so it's like bro what are you doing you've already got like what is it like three million people or something like that there i think it's even more i think it's like five or six million people shit six million people over there (laughs) (laughs) that wouldn't even have caught me if you didn't say that you know if you didn't make a big deal about it i would that would have really just skipped over I don't know what you're talking about. I just recalled the yeah. fact that I, I was wrong about three million people. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> but anyway, you know, so, people have a tendency to not correctly estimate things. You know, it's it's these large <laughs> figures are kind of hard to determine exactly where you're at when it comes to numbers. You know, because like you got to ask, are you talking about the main city area? Are you talking about mm-hmm. the metropolitan area? Are right. you talking about the extended like sort of boroughs or whatever you want to call them? Yeah. Like there's a lot of factors that can go into it. It could be like six million or it could even be like something like a hundred thousand if you're talking about just the main city area yeah 
I mean, you're telling me all those people are concentrated in that main city area. It just, I'm not even sure about that. I mean, like, it's, it's, you know, I, I have nothing for that, to be honest. <laughs> but yeah, it's large. So you already yeah. have a ton of people there. And then you have like these tiny ass roads. And then you're doing construction on top of that. And then all like 90% of the drivers are Hispanic, too. And a lot of them are women. Too. Jesus, we're just. <sighs> Every time we record a new episode, I feel like this is the last one. But anyway. <laughs> Like, I'm not wrong. Like, it, it, it's not ideal driving situations mm-hmm. there. Um, and then on top of that, it was spring break, too. So then you had even more, like, sloppy college drivers uh, on top yeah. of that. I saw a guy when we were going down that I'm one surprised road. I'm surprised you didn't get shot, though. It's spring break. Wait, what? It's spring break. I'm surprised you didn't get, you know, caught in one of those, uh, you know, shootings. This is news to me. What? <laughs> I'm not just saying recently. I'm just saying in general. You know, Miami. It's like you know, there's there's just the likelihood of it. You know, if you're if you're out at oh. night, I don't know if you were. Uh, partially. Yeah. Well, it usually happens if you're like at a party or something. But you know, I'm not saying it's a guarantee. I'm just saying of all Wait. the places. Shit, I don't know if you saw this video or if I'm thinking of another group of people. There was this video where. They were in a club and it was one of those like it was like a hip hop club, not like a cool dance club or whatever, mm-hmm. um, which I guess is still a dance club, but it's a sub optimal dance club. But anyway, um, there was a video of like some girl. She just dropped her pants and started getting head from some guy. <laughs> what? Wait, she started getting head from some guy. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of the club. Did they like and know I, each other? It's just some random chick. You know, would you put your I, mouth on that? I wouldn't. I don't know. This is why I don't have. Well, I do have Twitter. Wait, did they uh, get kicked out though? No, I don't think they did. Yeah, see, if it were the other way around, that would have they would have gotten kicked out. The guy can't see, show like, his dick. The dick is too uh, is too like menacing. It's too. It makes women too uncomfortable. But if a guy is like you know you you remember the the South Park episode about Game of Thrones where it's like women can be naked, uh, but men can't if they have a hard penis. They've got to have like a soft penis. But then if the gay men are naked, they can have a hard penis because apparently it's not like as a, yeah whatever menacing or intimidating to women. Like, but the, the straight men cannot have, you know, hard penises on Game of Thrones because it's like the, the women would be uncomfortable so they can show nudity of all other types. So it's kind of like this, you know, where a woman can be naked in a club, a guy could be eating her out, but you can't have like, you know, the other way around because then people would be uncomfortable. I, I admittedly would be more uncomfortable. Well, I'm not saying I wouldn't be either. I'm just saying, you know, it's like, you know, well, first of all, I'm just saying like the women specifically of the club, which, you know, they're obviously more the the sensitive ones. You know, I'm not necessarily saying I want to see this either way. I'm just saying, you know, I think who would take more offense to it? First of all, women. And then they would take more offense to if it were a man getting, you know, head from a woman than a woman getting head from a man. You know, if anything, right now, they're probably like, you go, girl, you know? Yeah. My thing, I mean... I think there's something about the feet shit. We're going to get philosophical in this bit. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. I... Yo, so see when, you see a, when you see a naked women, mm-hmm. I, that shit look good, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it does. It does. Like, yeah. uh, I think. Well, but are you saying that women don't like seeing naked men? Like, only in the context of one man, you're saying. Like, I think they're probably, just, yeah. they're not as likely to see a m- naked man and say that. I want that right now, as opposed to a man that sees a naked woman. I mean, the junk of a man just generally isn't very attractive, objectively, I think. I mean, I'm obviously not gay, so I'm (laughs) talking about this anyway. But, like, even from a perspective of a woman, I don't think they're like, oh, my God, that looks amazing. So... What? So, you know, like, but what, like, should they be seeing other women naked and thinking that looks good well no okay they should in the sense of like probably, it aesthetically you know, looks good yeah but not like not i'm like, sexually attracted to that right right right, right. Like, like not the like they want to do anything with it the female body is just aesthetically easier to like not fuck up basically whereas mm-hmm. the male body like unless you're like ultra jacked in like a in like a like a model type way not like a Mm -hmm. bodybuilder type way because those guys look kind of gross uh and not like the the like really metrosexual models i mean like uh there's just like this one commercial i always got on spotify 
for like I think it was Calvin Klein or something like that. And it was some like Italian like uh ah, shit, what do you call those guys? Cliff divers or whatever. And he was like jacked, but he was like mm-hmm. jacked in like the best shit. Okay, hold on. I'm like, yeah. But he was jacked in like well, a way where it doesn't look like ridiculous. Like good shoulder proportions to waist, you know, having like broader shoulders and then having a better form of the upper body to where it doesn't look gross because you're fat. Right, right. But it's not like you're like, you know, on steroids. Exactly. Like it looks natural enough. Yeah. I don't know if it was because, you know, models, but I'm assuming it was. Uh, if you look like that, well, shit, I have the perfect example. If you look like a Greek statue, basically, I think that's like where a woman would be like, oh, okay, that's fine. But most people don't have that uh, for multiple reasons, obviously. But mm-hmm. because it's so much harder to get that physique and keep it, it's much less likely that someone's going to see a man naked and be like, yes, I enjoy seeing this, especially in a public setting. Yeah. Whereas if it's like a woman, I mean, like there's literally like clubs for this. So, I mean, huh. but yeah, it's tough out, tough out here for these men. Yeah, we got to rough it but anyway, I brought this up because I was wondering. I guess you didn't see it, so I guess I can't really get an answer from me. I was wondering if that was in a Miami club that happened. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what the inside of every club looks like, but I probably would be able to tell you generally. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. You know, it, where else would it have happened? I mean, let's be honest. My other guess was Orlando. I don't know about that. I think it's, it's a far more likely to happen in Miami. That's what I was thinking. But uh, my thing is, she was on the floor, like sitting or like... On the floor? I thought yeah. she was standing. No, I don't even know how you do that standing. Like he's uh, on his knees. Or like, yeah. See, but then you're but still I mean, not even really getting a good because it's not like spread out. Yeah. Like you'd have to. Yeah. So she was on the floor just from a like a pure safety uh, thing. Why would you do that? Because like people are like dancing and shit. Like, what if somebody doesn't yeah. see you and they trip over you or they just step on you? Like, you're fucked. But the, think of the sanitary no, aspect out, of it, too. Like, you know, would you really want your food on the floor? Do you uh, apply the uh, three-second rule when you <laughs> drop your food? Uh, It depends on the food. So the thing is, I mean, like, if the food is, like, wet or, like, sticky, no. But if the food's, like, dry and, like, you know, it's not going to attract a lot of stuff that you can't just wipe off, then then it's fine. Yeah, you wouldn't want to be using the three second rule in there. Like if you drop like a piece of melted cheese on the floor, no, that's a problem. Yeah. Now, if you drop like over. a gummy bear or like something like that, you know, that's like, you know, it's it's fine. You're okay. It does seem to be candy is like the go to where it's like yeah. That you haven't already chewed on. Rule. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have dropped food on the floor though and eaten it. You know, I'll be honest. It was in college and I didn't want to make more food. And my roommate and I were like, we'll just eat it. You know, the floor is not that bad right now. We cleaned it. It's okay. I mean, not just once, you know, but multiple, like twice, probably, <laughs> you know. And I mean, the worst part is it, it was like a stickier food because it was like an omelet, you know, but I mean, it was like on the outer part, like with the eggs, like, you know, it, it dropped because I was like flipping it in the pan or something it drops. We look at each other. We're just like, man, we got to eat this. And, you know, may as well, you know, floor omelet. And it happened more than again, same thing, omelet again, twice. And we ate it still. You have like really slippery plates or something. I think it was the pan, like not having much uh, like of a surface around. Like it doesn't have like a border. And then it was sort of like using butter. So it's like slipping all over the pan. See, usually I have the opposite issue where I can't get the omelet off the pan. Well, you got to use more butter and you got to keep it. You got to keep the pan a little bit hotter before you start putting the eggs in with the butter. The water should be dancing yeah. around. You know, the water got to dance around, man. Yeah, it's such a process that I just kind of like, eh, I'll wing it and yeah. assume it's good. And it usually comes out good anyway. Like, it's a little bit yeah. more struggling anyway. Mm-hmm. But I mean, like. But you don't use like, uh, you don't use like the nonstick pans anymore, right? No, no, no. That's yeah, stainless steel. yeah, exactly. Like, I switched to that and, it, you know, it, it. I don't even think I've made many omelets since. Like, I used to use the nonstick pan a lot, but uh, I use stainless steel and cast iron. And then I, I just make more like fried eggs. I make the fried eggs in the. um Generally speaking, I make the fried eggs in the cast iron and then like the scrambled in the stainless steel. Fried eggs are the best kind. Yeah, they are. I don't mind um, some scrambled here and there, and I put like a yolk on top. So it makes see it if I'm doing scrambled, I usually just make an omelet at that point. No, you know, 
Yeah. But uh, anyway, that reminds me of uh, many moons ago when I used to when I ate something off the floor or not not actually off the floor. This was when I was in uh I think fifth grade or something mm. like that. And in, I don't know if I told the story before. Well, if I did, you're hearing it again. Anyway, uh, me and my 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 buddy, we were like in the after school program that was attached to our school because, you know, my mom was working late and his mm-hmm. parents are working late and all that. Um, so for, we were always like at school, like hours after uh, school actually ended. And it was mm-hmm. basically it was usually on the school campus or whatever. And every now and then, you know, since it's a school, they'll have like uh, they'll have games and stuff. They'll have like after school, like celebration and stuff like that. And I forgot what it was. It had to be close to uh, close to like Halloween or something like that, because I remember the cookie looked like that. But they had some kind of like celebration after school in the gym and extending into like the main like uh, like courtyard up to the gym or whatever. And uh yeah, so they had that celebration or whatever. And me and him, we were just kind of like wandering around. And then like one day, like right by the the like water fountain area that was there, we uh caught a glimpse of the trash can, which had a bunch of cookies. We're like, oh, I guess we're some big thing. And then I don't know if it was me or him, one of us caught an eye, a glance, a glimmer in the dark black trash bag of a ghost shaped Publix cookie. And I I know you've you're probably familiar with Publix cookies. Those cookies yeah. are those are stellar. Um it was the sugar we, cookie. Yes. Yeah. And it was almost like something from like a cartoon or like a religious movie or something, like sitting perfectly on like a plate. It was the eclair. <laughs> it was like with the eclair with George, how he grabbed it. Exactly. Except I had no shame. Well, yeah. no, well, he got caught. That's when he had the shame. That's when he had the shame. Yeah, we didn't get caught. Except yeah. now I'm telling you, so now I'm technically getting caught. But anyway, no. you already ate it. That's true. Like on the plate, perfectly untouched by any other food stuff. And it was like deep in there, too. So I don't even know how this is possible. Unbroken, untainted, nothing sitting there as almost a ray of light from the heavens, guiding our gaze down to it. We see this cookie. And we exchanged glances without a word. <laughs> Took me a couple tries. <laughs> he got it eventually. Without a word, he grabs the cookie. We inspect the cookie. And we split it and eat the cookie. Look to the cookie. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We did look to the cookie. And we shared in its goodness. That was a mighty... Was he an really opposite other- race as you? Yeah. Okay, well then you did look to the cookie and it the fixed cookie. the issue of race relations. It, the black I mean, and white cookie. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yellow, I don't know. We uh the thing is like at after school too, uh we ate lunch usually around like 12, 12 30 or whatever. So up until then we didn't really have any food unless you packed extra snacks or whatever, which frequently was not the case. So then like at like five or four or whatever this was, we see this cookie untouched. This is like a godsend. Like a miracle from the heavens. And my God, I think because of that, the fact that we found it in such an un, uh, unlikely scenario, it tasted so much better. Even if it was only half a cookie and in any other circumstance, I would have eaten five as a serving. <laughs> but damn, yeah, I imagine it was good. It was a great cookie. I had yeah. another story about like eating something off the ground, but I can't remember what it was now. You know what, man? You know what sucks? You know, these uh, these birthday cakes. You know, I, I have some family birthdays. And looking for cake that doesn't have seed oils in it is just impossible. There is no seed oil-free cake unless you make it yourself, honestly, these days. It's gotten to the point where just generally any kind of dessert, I'm looking just, like, I'll pass off, like, hidden starches, like uh, corn syrup. Mm-hmm. If it just doesn't have any seed oils, because that, that's like the standard I'm at right now. I can't yeah. find anything that doesn't have it. It's always like sesame oil or soybean oil, safflower oil, canola oil, Vegetable sunflower seed oil, palm oil. It, yeah, it's well, palm oil is not as bad as it seems. Mm-hmm. It's like if coconut oil is like the best plant based oil, palm oil is like a second place mm-hmm. and not like far from what I remember. It's like 85 percent uh, saturated. Mm. You know, the and thing is, like though, bit, but... I found I found like one cake that like has minimal amounts of it 
you know, so I was, I think it was like the main issue is that it had more like soy lecithin, if anything, which still like has seed oil, but, or it still has, um, what does it have? Uh, I can't even remember at this point, but yeah, it basically is just like consuming seed oils. Um, I, I think what it is was that exactly, it's not the actual soybean oil, yeah. but it's like, is it like extra process or something to make it like thick or something? Let me look it up. Uh, Oh my god, why is it showing me less than in general? I need to find a I mean, let's see, food additive that comes from several sources, one being soy. Yeah, I'm trying to find something on the soy less than itself. Cause I see that more than I actually see the soybean oil on like the back of an ingredient list. I mean it just says food additive sourced from soy, but let me see if I can find No, it's just too hard. Let's see. They don't give you information on this stuff unless you click on the article. <laughs> There's no quick answer. Uh, let's see. Cholesterol reduction? Bro. <laughs> Research indicates that diet rich in lecithin may increase good HDL and lower bad H- LDL cholesterol. Eh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know. Even if it that. did, who cares? Yeah, the point isn't lowering LDL. The point is like not oxidizing LDL. But they just kind of equate it with like, oh, having higher LDL is uh is bad automatically. Uh, That's bad. See. <laughs> it's bad. Okay. Uh, it just talks about mufas. Like, what did they have? Uh, let's see. Oh no, that's a different article. Whoops. It just you just scroll. Saturated. Yeah, you just scroll and it just goes to the next one and it's like a completely unrelated thing, but you know, there's no actual like going to a next article. It's just, you know, they just have it as if like the next article is listed as you keep reading. It just goes to the next one. Oh, I think I found it. Um, yeah, here it is. The major, it's on Wikipedia. The major components of commercial soybean derived less than are 30, 33 to 35% soybean oil. Uh, and then just a bunch of other things I can barely pronounce. <laughs> uh, yeah, so pretty much, I mean, a third of it is soybean oil. Which is yeah. terrible. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me actually look up the Publix cake because this is like a flourless cake. So it's like, oh, well, people that don't have a gluten in- or the people that do have a gluten intolerance can eat it. But what exactly is in the cake other than that? How about we look at this cake? Publix flourless yeah, chocolate cake. What is the actual, what are they replacing the flour with? You know, uh, first of all, good question, but I don't think it was terrible. Let me see if I can find the actual ingredients on this. Now, the thing is, uh, I, I was reading about cakes and the thing is that basically... You know, well, you were reading made... about cakes. I yes. was witnessing cakes. <laughs> you know, exactly in Miami, right? But um, you know, the thing is, they used to make cake with butter. But the thing is, you would have to leave the cake out because it would have to thaw. Because even if you put it in the refrigerator, butter is going to be hard because uh, saturated fats remain hard, like at cold temperatures. Let's see. You know, I remain hard at cold temperatures. Let's see. Damn. No shrinkage. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Ingredients. Oh yeah. Okay. So the first ingredient is semi-sweet chocolate, but then it has unsweetened chocolate, like in the, in the chocolate, uh, sugar, good cocoa butter, uh, soy lecithin is like the second to last ingredient and vanilla. And then there's organic eggs, butter flavor, cream and natural flavors. So it's not really like fake. Technically it has cream and natural flavors. I don't know why they'd call it butter. Flavor. Uh, butter yeah. flavor. I don't know. That sounds like margarine. It says cream. It says cream. It doesn't say any margarine or like anything else. It just says cream and natural flavors. Okay. And then why would sugar. they emphasize butter flavor? I don't know, man. But you know, it says cream on there. Why, what else would it be? They'd have to list it out like further if there were actually things within that. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So is the butter flavor parentheses cream? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that was right. different. No. So the semi-sweet chocolate is the thing that has the soy lecithin. Then there's organic eggs. Then there's butter flavor, which is cream and natural flavors. Sugar uh, is in, is the next thing. Then chocolate flavored coating that has sugar, vegetable oils, palm kernel, and palm. So technically, it's not the worst thing, I guess. Um, and then cocoa processed with alkali, lactose, milk, sunflower lecithin. Oh, no. Uh, let's see. So the I think it's... Oh, this is all in the chocolate flavored coating. Okay, so the chocolate flavored coating all has sugar, vegetable oils, which are the palm and kernel, or the palm kernel and palm, cocoa, uh, lactose, and sunflower lecithin and vanilla. So, I mean, this isn't the worst cake ever. It's not great, but it's not the worst cake ever. 
So it doesn't even look like it looks like the flower. Like it's just texturally, it's like pretty much just chocolate. Like this is a, a, a just made to be like a, a thick, fluffy chocolate. Like they just use eggs and chocolate as the as the main ingredients. Like so, this is like aside from all the the junk in it, it's just chocolate, eggs, uh, sugar, and then the coating. Is it like a brownie type thing then? I want to like, say what's yes. What's the consistency? I've, I've tried if you're it, not using flour. I've tried it. I've tried it, but I can't remember exactly. But yeah, I mean it. It's just a little fluffier because of the eggs. But overall, it's just similar to like you know like a a, a chocolate like dessert that isn't necessarily a cake. Oh, it's called is a truffle it like, torte. Is it similar to like cheesecake, like texture? Because they don't use flour in that, depending on what kind of cheesecake you get. I want to say a little lighter than that. It's not. I don't think it's as dense. Okay. But anyway, this isn't the worst cake for you. This is actually probably one of the best cakes you could probably find at the store, just because the all the other ones definitely have uh, other seed oils in them that are like shortening and like uh, canola oil or like soybean oil. Um, so I know this does have the soy lecithin. And it does have the um, well, it does have the uh, the sunflower lecithin as well, and then the I mean the palm oil, as we said, is not going to be the worst thing. So I mean, you know, the two lecithins are probably the worst thing in it. But honestly, you know, if I were to eat this cake, and I I I, I kind of may have like one bite of it or something because it's it's a family member's birthday, so it's like okay, well, you eat some cake, you know. But I don't want to eat the whole cake. I don't want to eat a big piece of cake. I wouldn't even want to eat a third of the cake. But like you know, I'm just saying it's it's probably not the worst thing to eat. You said you got this at Publix. Yeah. Hmm. I'm just saying if there is a family birthday and I had to pick a cake like this makes sense. It's a small cake though. It's like a really small cake. You don't need a big cake anyway unless you're like it's like a, a tiny cake birthday. It's a very tiny cake. Like it's not like the size of a cupcake but it's like you know you could hold it in both hands without it like crossing over past either hand. You know what I mean? Pretty much. Almost. I think it might be a little bigger than that. It's like one of those round cakes. Um, I mean round in what sense like it, it looks like a circle like it's not like a, a it's like not a like rectangular a yeah it's it's circular like well on the on the edges right i could send you a link yeah. to this so you can just look at the picture actually yeah that works <laughs> but anyway you know i'm just saying i want cakes with real butter though like i don't care that it has to thaw what do you think i'm some pussy you know i could take a cake out so you're saying like if you had to choose between two cakes, you would prefer a cake that's naturally cooked the old fashioned way as opposed to, you know, somebody insecure about the shape of their cake or to flavor <laughs> the cake and going out of their way to inject it with, you know, false fats and, and right. other things to make it look and taste. Uh, well, it's really unnaturally so better the, so that you could put the fork in it without having to leave it out for long. Right. But I don't like that. I think that's some pussy shit. Yeah, you want the natural thing. Oh, okay. It's like really chocolatey. Yeah. It's like straight chocolate. It's okay. almost just straight chocolate. Yeah. Chocolate, egg, and sugar is the main thing in this. See, I don't even really like chocolate cakes like that. Well, I'm just saying it's better than a lot of other cakes. <laughs> if they had this, but like vanilla, that would be like way better. Mm. In my opinion, at least. Chocolate's I think if anything, the, the, the thing that bothers me most, not even the sunflower lecithin or like the uh, the palm oil, it's like it's just the, the soy lecithin that they put in the chocolate. Like, I think that's the worst part of this. You don't even need to put that in there. Yeah. I don't know why they put it in there. Because the other things I can understand why they thought this was OK, like in their minds, in their warped reality. But like, really, <laughs> the soy lecithin? I mean, listen, I. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some regulation saying you need X amount of thing and like the cheapest thing to get that thing in there is soy less they of things. So like, right, baby it. formula. I don't know if I talked about this on here, but baby formula is literally regulated to ha like to force to put in like uh, like uh, a certain amount of like linoleic acid content or like I guess like polyunsaturated fats. I think it is the fact that it's like linoleic acid because women generally have a certain amount in their breast milk. But the only reason they have that much in their breast milk is because of the fucking seed oils. <laughs> Yeah. So they're like, hey, you have to put this in here. <laughs> like, you know, all right. Wait, how how far are we, you know are we with this? Can I can I get like a, a conspiratorial? Little... Yeah, yeah, here we go. We're what, like 40 minutes in? Yeah. All right, the, the bot or whatever probably won't catch us. Anyway, we've talked about, you know, how foods can literally change the way you behave and all that. I'm I'm of the opinion at this point, or at least I'm getting to the conclusion where, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody knows about all these things because before and you know, I figured, okay, well, people just don't have the research to do this. But then you find out that all the research that 
is saying the wrong things is funded by certain people uh like big uh people of like other interests and whatnot i wouldn't be surprised if you know people are aware of the effects of all these ingredients on people mm -hmm. and they figure well you know it would be better if I could control the way this person behaves and thinks for certain things. And the best way for me to do that is to a push things as that are healthy, that actually make people much more agreeable to my cause mm -hmm. or, and b hide them in things that they wouldn't even think to look at. Yeah. You know, I mean, even on a more surface level, if you look at, uh, cause there was this guy going over sort of, um, like what, what is why is saturated fat being demonized there were like studies done on it like as far as you know the saturated fat stuff but then you look at like the conflict of interest listed in the study it's like all these companies that sell cholesterol medication uh and pretty much they're the ones that are trying to influence people to not eat saturated fats so you'd wonder if you want people to not eat saturated fats why is that you know it's almost like you have something that you want to sell them when they get sick it's like well what would they get sick from well, maybe it's the thing that you're telling them to eat instead of the other thing. And maybe, you know, since, <laughs> you know, people are having more issues with this stuff and you're trying to sell them, you know, these meds, uh, it, it seems like it would be making sense that this all comes together for you to actually profit more off of this. Yeah. By the way, this is not medical advice, but you need to find a way to get off any kind of medical dependency mm -hmm. because that is a eternal hole in your wallet that it, once you get free of that, Things should be way better in terms of like being able to afford things, being able to function like it's pretty obvious that I, I don't think there's there's barely anybody that really defends like the pharmaceutical industry at this point. It's kind of like an open secret that, yeah, these people are just awful people that want to like reap the benefits off of your sickness, basically, that they yeah. probably in some way or another have a hand in causing. Yeah, I know this uh this this woman, this uh this figure, if you will, uh, you know, <laughs> that is on like fucking uh these all these medications, like SSRIs for like, you know, I, I don't know if it's like, you know, it was womp given womp. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, for depression or anxiety kind of thing. You know, obviously that's gonna increase serotonin in the brain, is being given Adderall. Uh, you know, for, I guess, like attention deficit, right? Because that's usually what people are taking it for. But, you know, the thing is, uh, what I know about Adderall is that, first of all, it's overexerting the neurons in the brain. And so eventually you're just going to be wiping out your mind as you take it more. And, you know, I actually saw this thing that had to do with like people who have ADHD actually actually have like a lower brain volume or something like that. But what I read further onto somebody replying that to that is saying that like it actually may just be the Adderall doing that, not that they necessarily have a lower brain volume that they were born with and that's what's causing the deficit uh, in, in attention. It may be the case that, you know, you have this medicine that is exerting those neurons. And so essentially when you have that happening, that is what's lowering the brain density itself. So if anything, you're taking this thing that's like, I mean, essentially neurotoxic. And so, and also she's taking like this seizure medication, which is also, you know, like th that is neurotoxic as well. And so I was reading into like, you know, this stuff. I mean, there are things you can take to not have to take any of these things, but, but if I were to, if I were to sort of like point to, to what's happening here, just to overall, and also smokes weed for like the seizures as well. Right. But you know, like think about this. So <laughs> seizures are actually caused uh, a lot of the time by certain deficiencies. I mean, it, like, you know, magnesium, sodium, vitamin B6, uh, things like that, uh, as well as excess estrogen actually causes water retention. And so you actually have like lower blood sodium and, uh, and, and as well, like, you know, things like low, lack of thyroid function actually cause you to have, uh, you know, a lower ability to retain the magnesium and use it. So what you're seeing here is that so she's being given, you know, this uh these ssris which uh serotonin is being increased in the brain but also i believe i read something about them being um like i, I need to look into this a little bit more but i believe there is an estrogenic uh, like connection there now what i know for sure is that weed is extra estrogenic uh when you're smoking that not only the smoke but like you know the actual like weed you're smoking um and you know the thing here is is that basically you know, there, there, are, there are factors that she's, you know, putting herself through that are causing the estrogen to increase, which is likely what's causing the seizures, which is putting her on the seizure medication, um, you know, and, and so basically like this increase in estrogen in the body uh, from the other medications is causing another medication to be given. And then like, if anything, um, what is it? So she takes like the SSRIs. Yeah. I mean, she's taking all these like different like medical like things for her, for her mind, you know, like for the, for the, for the seizures. Um, but if anything, you know, the increase in estrogen is causing the seizures and 
you know, you have this like sort of like connection between all these drugs that are essentially just putting her in a loop of needing to take one for the other. You know what I mean? It, it's almost becoming that sort of like circle of these things. Um, and so basically like, uh, you know, the, also the, the, the seizure medication is due to the other drugs that are causing the increase in the estrogen. And then, um, I, I don't know like exactly what else she takes, but basically like, yeah, it's just, it's just this circular thing where it's like, if she just gets off, like if she just weans herself off of these things, like these wouldn't actually be causing her like the same, uh, level of, 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 uh, like pain. Like she was, she could just take, uh, like, uh, progesterone to actually counter the, um, instead of the, the seizure medication to actually counter the, the estrogen that's causing the seizures, take more sodium, take more magnesium, like get the electrolytes correct. Um, and what is it? Uh, basically like improve thyroid function, do things that are helping toward that. Uh, and, and I mean, you know, overall like vitamin E as well to reduce the frequency of the actual seizures and the, uh, the, the strength of them. And so, you know, there are things that she could be doing this natural to do this. I've been telling her about this and she's been catching on a little bit, but overall it's like, you are just being so fucked by these doctors that are telling you, you need to take this medication for your problem, but it's really just putting a bandaid over it. And then the ones that are like prescribing you one thing are making you sicker so that the other one needs to prescribe you more things. But then that one needs to like, you know, have something that you're prescribed for because of that. And you just get in this endless cycle of like, just get taking more and more medication that's affecting you negatively. You know, this reminds me of a movie that I went to see with uh, two of my buddies recently or, well, relatively recently. Was it but... one the one where the pregnant chick swapped brains with the baby? <laughs> no, 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 no. I wish I went to see that with friends and not my family. <laughs> Jesus. I'm just going to keep bringing that up every time you say I saw a movie. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it, it, it's like a running gag. Like, what? why? Why? Anyway, um, it was the latest DiCaprio movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. And uh, if you haven't seen it, I don't give a shit. I'm spoiling that shit. Anyway. Uh, basically it's the story of like how like these settlers kind of like stole the fortune of like a native tribe that grew to have like a lot of wealth. Cause I think it was, I think it was oil that they found on their land mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and Leo's character, he marries one of the native women, uh, cause there's like a lot of like intermixing with that, uh, because you have like, it's like a town of like, uh, native Americans and like white settlers that, that are like living together. Uh, but he marries a woman and she's the heir to some kind of fortune. I forget exactly the specifics, but she's diagnosed with diabetes. So once he marries her, he has a doctor come in and the doc's like, okay, you need to have her take this. And if she doesn't take this and you know, you got to make sure she gets it, whatever. It's like important. She takes this medicine. And I think it was supposed to be insulin or whatever. Cause yet, it would have to be because that's diabetes, like medicine mm -hmm. or whatever. But uh, I don't remember who exactly, if it was the doctor or if it was like the uh, his like uncle who was like the town like mayor or something like that, or like benefactor. He had some kind of power or whatever that was like saying, yeah, don't give her this. Give her this instead. And he didn't exactly know what it was, but he kind of knew what the game was. And basically what he was doing is he was poisoning her slowly to the point where she was like bedridden and unable to like, she's almost in like a veg vegetative state at mm -hmm. the, towards like the climax of the movie where she couldn't like get up. She couldn't move. She couldn't like talk. Basically she was just in like a state of constant dreariness, uh, mind fog, so on and so forth. Um, but the whole goal of it was, to get the money and the way you did it was by giving them something they said was good for you but was really just killing you slowly now listen if i were a betting man if i were a man to make like some kind of uh connection to the real world via this art piece that probably has no connection to uh reality at all you know if i were one of those people that would make that kind of connection which i'm not saying i am i would say you know there might be there might be potentially uh some kind of correlation to the medical industry and the food industry that are necessarily intertwined, especially in the United States. But you know, that's not me. If I was somebody that would make those connections, I would think maybe somebody could come to that conclusion, but not me. I would never say that because this is not medical advice, but you know, just putting that out there. Yeah. You know, that me. has no applicability to, to what we're even talking about here. No, no. I, you know, I just thought it was like an interesting anecdote. <laughs> Yeah. 
So if you if you find us, look, we are not uh, we have no ideation of uh, of harming ourselves in any way. We would never do something like that. And you know, if you ever find us, you know, if they say it was self deletion, and there were actually <laughs> like uh, like three holes in the back of our head. Uh, self-inflicted obviously you know at that point if based on what they're saying you know I, I wouldn't necessarily say take their word for it so you know <laughs> you know I just I don't know why I just have the the sudden urge to like declare that I'm I'm not depressed in any way yeah. shape or form and I'm the I, happiest I I've not, ever been I would not feel any inclination to uh self-delete or anything yeah. like that uh I, I just felt like the audience should know that yeah I <laughs> We'll just we'll just uh, kind of leave it at that, I guess, for that. <laughs> uh, I, I guess back to Miami. Um, you know, I could see myself living there. It'd be nice. Mm-hmm. It, it's you, like big you do see yourself full time. Like you know, it would be enjoyable. If I were to pick a place that kind of hit everything with the least amount of uh, oh, well, shit, what's what's the word for it? I keep forgetting my words when I'm on this thing. Uh, drawbacks. Mm-hmm. It would probably be that because I'm I'm a guy. I'm a guy that likes a a bit of a bit of like a, a suburban, you know, quiet area when it, I want it. But at the same time, you know, if I want to go out, have a nice time in the big city, the mm-hmm. big city nights, the big city, the big city nights, uh, it's right there. And and yeah. <laughs> and if I were to choose a woman of, you know my standards it would not be hard (laughs) because it's it's, abundant it's it's like an inflation type thing not inflation hoflation is a real thing but i'm not talking about that i'm talking about wifeflation if anything here yeah so if anything you know in the currency that you have toward finding a woman this is actually a deflation you know that counters the hoflation right right Right, like the whole inflation exists in abundance. I might add it there, but mm-hmm. the uh, yeah. the caveat is you have wife inflation at the same time, which kind of, you know, you're like, okay, th- this is a, a decent drawback. Mm-hmm. Also, it's like super hot there, which I enjoy. That's I good. enjoy a lot. It is good. It's very nice. Like you walk outside. Like there was a point where we were in the car for a while because we were driving to like different areas of the city for uh, you know just like looking around and shit. And it almost, I think at one point I woke up or like, I was like in bed at night in the hotel or whatever. And I started feeling my hand and I think I got a sunburn on my hand just from like sitting in the car. And most people would be like, oh, that's awful. But I was thinking, this is great. This is amazing. (laughs) It's that hot where that can happen. (laughs) You know, the thing is you got to find something that is uh well obviously we, we know you got to get your finances right especially if you want to live in a place like miami you know the thing yeah. is though there, there are people that you know they have their own like trades you know in the sense that like they're on the street approaching people to give them services you know like this guy with a camera uh he would do like you know photos for people he would be like oh let me get some quick shots for you man and he'd send them all to like your iphone or whatever i mean you th- this man is making like hundreds of dollars doing this stuff i had a friend that used that and apparently, I don't remember how much he said he paid him, but you know that guy could get like quick hundred bucks or something just taking some photos for somebody, and then just do that over and over and over. With like uh, an actual camera or like a an iPhone. I don't remember. I think he probably either had like a really good quality iPhone or like a camera that just let him like you know, uh, just you know, download that real quick and send it. Damn, you know, I did notice a lot more. Uh, I guess you could call them street vendors, but like you know. They're not like the homeless people that come up to your window and beg. They're like the people with like something they're selling. Like, and they'll come in during every red light on the busy street and like sell things, <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, I saw what a lot kind of more of those. Are they selling? They're selling like roses. There's one guy, bro. This one guy, he was coming up with like, uh, shit, what was it? It was oranges, mm. limes, and like one other green fruit. And I think the person next to me was like, oh, are those mangoes? Yo. I would have I would have bought a mango if those are mangoes. Yeah. But so was it like was this a was this a Hispanic guy? Oh, they're all Hispanic. Okay. You know, I don't know. All there there are there are black guys there too. I mean, they're usually the ones selling drugs, but I did not see that many. I saw know, like I, I don't know. They're like right near the beach. I don't know if they're cops actually or what. <laughs> but why would those guys be cops if you think about it? The fruit guys? No. 
The black guys. Oh, I did not see a single black cop there. <laughs> I don't. You I don't know, think I saw a single black. The, the way they dress and the way their their demeanor is almost gives lends them credibility toward not being a cop. You know what I mean? Well, like maybe that's what the cops cop want or... you to think. Yeah, because they're just guys saying you want like coke or something. <laughs> yeah, they're like you want some coke. They're just saying that out in the open, and there are cops near the beach. They don't care. You think you think the cop? Well, the cops would have to be like. You think they like give a shit anymore? Because I, I mean, because everybody does it. I, like it's a stereotype for a reason, no? Yeah. Like, um, I wouldn't buy it though. I don't know if that coke's laced. Well, I, I would hope you wouldn't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if I had to do a drug, like a hard drug, it would be coke. I mean, no, okay, we're gonna go down this path. All right. <laughs> I've said it before. I don't think on here, but if you're going to do a drug, the most Sigma drug to do is Coke. Yeah. As long as it's pure, then you're all right. 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 You if don't want like the, cut the least or even like bleach or, or whatever. Get your nose fucking like a hole in it or something. You know, this is going to be an interesting title. I'm going to make for this. You know, when I was looking into uh, my, what is that? Third, third or fourth preferred musical genre, the history of it, the, uh, the music they call house uh it's known at least historically to be uh like you go to a club or whatever or a festival or whatever you would usually use depending on the style mdma or ecstasy Mm -hmm. and i was like when i was looking into this as a a younger lad i was like oh this sounds interesting this would be a nice experience you know the fallacy of better try it once or whatever just to see what it's like just to live my life do that kind of shit the woman logic but anyway (laughs) uh that shit is laced like 90% of the time, mm-hmm. basically. Uh, so if you did it, there's a very good chance you'll just die <laughs> after repetitive use. Because like yeah. they'll lace it with like anything that's even remotely kind of you know similar to the texture or whatever. Yeah. So that could be a ton of things. So we need cheaper fill. We need uh, not cheaper, we need um, higher quality fillers for drugs. We do. Put so some that sugar people in aren't- there. You know, because if you're not, if you don't need to purposefully kill the people, you know, then you could just use some shit that like doesn't even affect them, you know? Sugar. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. You know, why, why, why don't, why don't these drug users or drug dealers use some of that? Is it just not cheap enough? <laughs> you have like legalized the drugs and you have like one solo MDMA lace with your best fentanyl. And then the other guy's like, no, nah, no, nah, we use all natural MDMA. We lace it with a little bit of sugar. So you get mm-hmm. a little bump. Um, and we make sure it's completely free of any unnecessary fillers. This is the best kind of natural MDMA you'll need. Now, obviously, you'll still have the same side effects of potentially permanent depression and whatnot. But mm. but we use real ingredients for the fillers. Imagine you could buy that online. I mean, you can. I mean, I know you can. I'm just saying, imagine you could buy it on the, the, the web white market, you know? Oh, like the not... Like... Nothing that you have to download another browser to find. Right. You know, just the regular online, you know, I can just type in a dot com website. You know, there's no like long ass extension. You know, something like that. Imagine you could just go to like, you know, MDMA.net, you know. <laughs> right. And then you just it's like, you know, because there's um like with like nicotine, for example, very easy to find, you know, I mean, like it's not like illegal or anything. You can find any product of nicotine you want. But, you know, it reminded me because they have like all these like natural nicotine products like we're one's called like knickknack. You know, this is not a sponsor or anything, but like one's called like knickknack and they're like a very natural like nicotine mint. And so like I get ads on Instagram for it and they're like, yeah, knickknack is actually all natural. It comes in this little can. You just pop a nicotine mint. You know, it's it's good for you. It's healthy. No fillers, no nothing. You know, uh, I think they still use artificial sweeteners because most of them do. But it's like Tegrity thing is, Farms. Yeah, pretty much. This is like the Tegrity Farms and nicotine. And so, you know, you can just go to their website. You know, they, they do make you like verify the 21 year old age if you want to actually buy it. But, you know, whatever, man. You know, it's like the thing is, at least you can get it online. You don't have to go to another separate like place to find it, you know? Yeah. It's just yeah, accessible for the people that want it. You know, as long as they say you're of this age, you know, you can have it. You know, let me put on my tinfoil hat again. Why do you think drugs are illegal? Huh? Think about it. <laughs> Why would they not want you to be on drugs? Well, it depends on the drug. You know, like, I, I mean, like LSD, for example, we went over that. Like, the thing is, the government just really just demonized that because it makes people more free spirited and less willing to obey. I mean, I think, 
you know, that might be, a, I don't necessarily know that that's like common between, cause a lot of drugs are just like depressants and they'll, they'll just, I mean, if anything, if you start abusing them, you're going to be a lot worse off. But I'm just saying like, at least in that instance, there would be one where it's like literal, like sense of like just needing to control people. Uh, I mean, you know, for the rest of the drugs, I, I mean, it, it probably makes sense to like, you know, I'm not saying to regulate, I'm just saying like for them in their minds, like they're saying like, um, Either that they're they're just in the they're in the mindset that's harmful, but for what the the government actually wants to do there, I think like, you know, I think they might thrive on having like some uh some things which are just not accessible to people. Like when they're when the market's not completely free, you know, they you know that's kind of a common thing between the government. I'm just saying like you know in the in, a, in the drug market as well, uh you know just having these things that are inaccessible to people and like causing this crime and whatever, and then the government has an excuse to say, well, we do need to regulate this like the crime itself, you know. Uh, we do need to like put an end to the criminals. Like it kind of gives them more to work on as far as like how they're actually controlling society rather than just having something very open that people are allowed to freely exchange in free commerce and all that uh, to where they would be like, okay, well, what do we even need the government to protect us from? Because imagine there were no like, uh, like, you know, like imagine drugs were just all legal and imagine you know, people, there's no people <laughs> imagine drugs all legal, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> That's something he probably would have wrote. Now, I'm pretty sure he wanted to. <laughs> he, that's what he actually initially wrote. They said he can't do that one. Uh, <laughs> you know, the CIA like, is going to come after you. We can't. Uh, we can't have this. Yeah, uh, the the DEA is not going to have it, man. They're they're going to kill you. Uh, now, the thing is, I'm just saying, like you know, imagine. Um, geez, I can't even say it at this point. Picture, <laughs> picture that. <laughs> picture that drugs were all legal and people could actually freely exchange in this stuff. And it becomes more like nicotine where you can just, I mean, you know, buy it online if you want, you know, it's kind of like this thing where like a lot more natural things start occurring because of it. Like there's not a lot of fillers anymore. Like you can actually see the ingredients in these things. Um, like, like, oh, geez, picture it. And I'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> like, it would actually cause a, a, in a sense, like a lot more understanding credibility, like, you know, knowing what's in these drugs, like, uh, like a, a, a scenario in which people are not actually having these overdoses, you know, unless it's by choice. Uh, but pretty much like they're not having these like lace drugs as like, it's, it's going to be very infrequent. You're not actually going to have like these criminal rings surrounding the, the use of like, you know, or the, the, the trading of drugs. Cause even like with Mexico, I think it became more beneficial for some cartels to like deal in avocados rather than, I don't know if it was weed because we got, uh, like, you know, at least, like less uh, like criminalized. And so the thing is like, if that's the case, that really has to do with like the incentives of what these people even have to make like these markets out of it where it gets violent. Uh, so basically, you know, you would actually have a lot less like drug crime. Uh, it would just literally decrease. But I, I think for the government, it makes more sense for them because they're like, well, we actually do need this crime. We actually do need this chaos. We actually do need some sort of like a level of instability so that we can justify enforcing the law or like laying down the law. And so that we can actually justify a lot of things past that. Like, you know, if it comes to like, oh, well, these criminals are using like these kinds of like weapons and all that. Like, I think it was, uh, it was like Al Capone or something that Congress had actually used as a justification for regulating the use of uh of firearms or i forgot which like if it was like automatic firearms or what i believe that was the case now what so that's basically my point is that like the government can use this not only uh you know in the sense of like um you know like scaring people as far as you know uh, like you know having something to make them fear about and trust the government in but also to like regulate other things within society and use that as a further justification okay so i'm going to start off with this I was entirely joking when I brought that up and I thought I was just going to use it as a ramp to like jokingly say you should do all the drugs. <laughs> uh, second of all, you're basically saying that. Hold on. Well, I need to think of a disclaimer I can use that'll fit this. Uh, basically, you're saying that shit. Yeah, whatever. I'm just going to say it. Uh, the way the world is run today in certain Western countries is that they're basically just dishonest fascists. Yeah. So like because... if if like a fascist nation said, we see all this rampant uh, degeneracy in society, therefore we need to put it down. The modern day says we need to cause degeneracy so we can justify putting the law down. Uh, you know, I, I mean, the, the degeneracy, I would say, is part of the justification, though. I don't think it's actually like what they're interested in putting down. Like it's like, you know, they'd rather manufacture something that people view as degenerate or that they can get people to view as degenerate so that they have a that they have like sort of like a moral panic that they can that they can spark. But it's not well, necessarily the case. 
Right. It's not, but I'm not necessarily saying it's the case that they're like incentivized to actually put down like degeneracy that they're like, oh, well this, it's a problem because it's like lack of moral values or something like that. It's not like, right, it's not like right. they're the ones that actually feel this, like, you know, that they actually, I mean, you know, think about who they are and what islands they go to. Like, I mean, these, these people are like, a lot of them are just friends with, or they were friends with, you know, Mr. Mr. Jeff. Uh, so, I mean, like, think <laughs> about like think, camp counselor name. Right. But like, well, you know, he kind of was a camp counselor if you think about it. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, if you think about it, it's like, OK, well, these people actually do way worse things than what they're saying you should be worried about. So it's like obviously the morality of it isn't actually the concern for them, or at least it's not even the concern for the government, because like, you know, those who within the government will just do way worse things than what they want you to freak out over. Yeah, that's what I meant. Like, not necessarily that they actually see anything wrong with it more so it's a means to control in mm -hmm. a way where they otherwise wouldn't be able to get the support for and at the same time because they they actually don't really see an issue with it but at the same time they benefit off it because now since it's illegal they're the only ones that are able to do it without any kind of uh repercussions really yeah you're always or it a smoke screen where they can do something that's far worse and less acceptable and it would be have a harder time to accept while demonizing another group that comparatively is not as bad you're always going to be creating a class of people that can necessarily have access to this stuff because it's like, you're, you're essentially saying like, you know, like the authority figures of the state are the ones that can just have access to these drugs unimpeded because it's like they can possess it, right? Like they can have it, but not everybody else can. So essentially you're, you're just legalizing it for certain people to be like having a whole, like a hold of it rather than everybody. So it's right. not it's not even necessarily the case that's like they view it as like the possession of it is the actual problem. It's just, oh, well, we don't want you possessing it like, you know, <laughs> but, you know, possession of it is not inherently bad even to them. Like they can't really justify that statement. Right. Uh, I mean, the argument in like broader, like cultural spheres anyway, is usually, well, what's wrong with this? So it would seem like it's we want it to be this way. And at the same time it's pushing things that are negative where it's mm -hmm. like, well, what's really the problem with this? And it creates more of a society where people have less of a reason to be against it. And therefore they go into it, whatever kind of vice or whatever it is. And it creates a society where there isn't any kind of standard on what is or isn't ideal for the people to do, mm -hmm. which means they're less likely to see an issue with what's going on and think about it uh, critically. And if you regular, if the state regulates like hard drugs, or if it doesn't, sorry, if it, if it stops regulating them, what exactly at that point is the justification for regulating prescription drugs, right? And so, like, basically, you know, at that point, people would sort of, I'm, I'm not necessarily saying they wake up and then the government has to change things because of that, but I'm saying it definitely weakens their case for, like, why drugs in general would actually be ne needed to be regulated. So that actually hurts the pharmaceutical industry. And you start to see, like, a case where people are, like, saying, well, wait a minute, like, you know, we can have access to, like, you know, meth unimpeded, but, you know, if I need an EpiPen, like, I can't carry it, like, let's say if I'm a restaurant owner, I can't carry it in my restaurant, like, I have to be prescribed it like to have that like i can't just have it like just in case somebody at my restaurant has an allergic reaction or something like that uh I like i can't to, like, just walmart and buy a case of them just in case yeah like i can't just buy insulin like let's say like you know i i have to go to the doctor to get that even though i could just be diabetic or something like that you know so basically um you know these what? these medicines these medications like are essentially, um, you know, limited. I mean, first of all, you know, imagine the amount of people that would just like self-medicate and, and I'm not even saying would like kill themselves over it. Or, sorry, you might have to bleep the K word there, but, uh, eh, we're like you know, maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, but anyway, point being like, imagine the amount of people that would not necessarily have to go to the doctor or get a prescription or like go to a pharmacy or anything like they just go. I mean, it may be still a pharmacy, but you know, maybe not like, you know, actually through the necessary, like necessarily like this brand of medication or whatever, like it would just be, you know, generic, uh, whatever epinephrine or, or whatever have you, like you could just get access to the drugs. Uh, I mean, you know, not only would it be like why people would be asking, like, why can't we just do that if, if hard drugs are legal? But it would also be like, if that were the case, uh, then, you know, <laughs> the government loses out on a big, you know, vast, uh, like amount of control over people in their lives uh, if they can't regulate something like that. Yeah, I was going to ask, what even is like, obviously, it's not the real justification. What even is the justification for making things behind such a rigorous regulation wall? when it's marketed as something that's supposed to be helping you anyway. Yeah. Like well, how, I mean, how do you justify saying only you, you can only get mm -hmm. insulin through this hoop and that hoop from this guy at this time, if they say they want you to give mm -hmm. you to it at this amount, like wh they, <laughs> why? They, 
they established the medical industry and doctors as like these authority figures that are the only ones that have access to this information. And like academia is the source of that, because I mean, obviously academia is like inherent to something that the state is propping up. So what you're seeing is like, they're saying like, well, basically only through our institutions and only people that have gone through our like, you know, certifications and such, you know, are the ones that are qualified to tell you exactly what you need as far as your, you know, your, your needs like medically. Whereas, you know, there, I mean, there's, there's a vast amount of information today that allows people to essentially find these things out for themselves. And so, you know, at that point, like they'll basically say, oh, well, even despite that, you don't necessarily know how to read studies. You don't know how to, and, and you know, they'll, they'll probably resort to studies is what they'll say is like, you know, the reason like you don't know how to interpret the information based on like, you know, this, this X and Y study or like, you know, uh, you don't know how to like, you know, they're, they're, they're going to ignore the fact that like you could just try things out and see what works for you or like you can hear from other people's experiences and uh, act based on what you understand. And, you know, it, you can assume that risk yourself if you would so please. But, you know, essentially, you know, they're, they're babying people and saying like, well, you know, you can't take that risk because you don't have like, you know, the qualifications, not even the information, I guess, at that point. Like they're just basically saying the qualifications because they don't really have an ability anymore to stand on just saying you don't have the information. But like basically these qualified medical practitioners are the ones that should be giving you this stuff. They are the ones that make the diagnosis. You know, you don't necessarily know how to read blood work or anything like why should you be allowed to get your blood work at a, at a, at a cheap price? You know, they need to be the ones to put to, to order that for you, you know, so you just have like a, a lot of um, a sort of like guardrails being put in place, you know, under the guise that like, it's like, oh, well, you're just underqualified for this. Whereas uh, it is just another layer of control. And essentially, like, I mean, this has to do a lot with the economic gain that the state gets from this, because restricting this market essentially makes it so that this medicine can be sold at these extreme prices. And, uh, you know, the insurance companies benefit from that. And like the pharmaceutical industry benefits from that. Like, so you have a lot of um, sort of in interconnected uh like financial gain that is happening from like literally uh you know uh preventing people from just you know uh, having a market in which these drugs could be sold at ever like ever so decreasing prices and and still have like their own gain from it. It's just that, you know, they don't get to centralize the gain that they get from it. They don't want the gain to sort of like spread throughout society. They want to be the ones that are only benefiting from it. Right. And because gee, there's like a lot I could go off on that. Uh, basically, if you keep people away from having the optimal life or like optimal health in any kind of way, then you don't really have to work as hard as uh, at like, uh, Jesus, I, so much shit. You don't have to work at as hard at trying to keep things as controlled. Like there's a lot less capital you would need to put into making sure people don't know the right things. People aren't able to get these things because then they wouldn't even think that like question that to begin with. Mm -hmm. But the other thing I was going to say is, you touched on one thing that I really drives me up a wall. I fucking hate insurance. The concept of insurance is the stupidest, most diabolical mm -hmm. scam anybody could ever come up with. And you know what makes it worse? A lot of the times, specifically with car insurance, I know. I don't know about the other ones. You literally have to have it. You can't say, yeah. well, I have enough money where if I get in the wreck, I don't really care. No, you need to have it. You need to right. keep paying these people this. And the other thing is... This is a thing in Europe, I know. Uh, I don't know if like the the US is having the same shit, but a lot of countries just outlaw things like Uber. So if you don't have a mm -hmm. car and you don't need a car, you don't need to pay car insurance because you don't need to buy a car to begin with. So if you can just like say, text on your phone and say, hey, I need to get to this point at this time. Could you get me? I know the guy's like, oh yeah, I'll pick you up. I'll do this. You're getting rid of the traffic on top of that because not now not as many people have the car. So you're probably getting there quicker than you would have anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, assuming a lot of people stop doing that, which I mean, you can't because cars are getting even more expensive, plus the car insurance, so you need to add on to that. But no, now you can't even have that. Now you need to rely on the incredibly unreliable uh, taxis and all that, which I mean, I guess maybe if they make it like basically the same thing, it's not the worst thing in the world. But then you have that lobby getting their money. That, but on top of that, if you don't want to do that, and you actually need a car regularly and you can't rely on some guy just happening to be on the street at the right time. You need to buy a car for that. And then you get have to pay car insurance on top of mm. that. You have to, no matter what, even if you don't get a wreck, even if you're a perfect driver, you still have to pay. And then the prices are going up on that too. So it doesn't even really matter if you're a good driver and your score is great or whatever. But then on top of that, you have to pay that. And I'm sure that the powers that be, the governments that force these aren't getting any kind of commission or anything like that from these insurance companies. I'm sure there's no connection there whatsoever. And it's <laughs> surely just a private enterprise that decided, yeah, we need to make this a thing. 
And even if it did, does that even really make it better? Because then now nobody can enter the market as a car insurance salesman and says, well, if you want us as the best like a uh, car insurance provider, you, you can choose to have us or not. No, you have to have it. So you're going to pick one of them anyway. It doesn't really matter if we do it right, if we're fucking you in the ass, which they totally do uh, or not. You need it. So you're going to do it. Yeah. And I mean, the fact that, I mean, essentially what you're seeing here is government created cartels where it's like, you know, because you're forced to have this insurance, you know, it doesn't really matter what the prices are on them because you're, you're pretty much fucked if you don't have it. So, I mean, you're going to have to like, they could all just say, yeah, we're going to raise all of our prices simultaneously and you have no other choice, but then to pay for it if you need to get to work. Like, so, you know, essentially there, there's no ability for people to just opt out and say, you know what, we don't like any, like what these insurance companies are doing. So to get them in check, we will stop paying for their services. No, it's, there is no check. Like you just have to pay for it. I mean, same with the taxis. It's sort of like, you know, you have this essentially same idea of this cartel being created where it's like the Uber drivers can't just provide a service, even if they wanted to at a lower price or even somebody that wanted to do something like an Uber service, not necessarily using such a like, you know, I guess like a it, it pretty much is a centralized like it's a firm. I mean, but you know, the, the company itself and the app, like it's, it's one location, but let's say somebody wanted to start up their own. Uh, you don't really have that choice of saying like, Oh, you know what? I will go with like, with this transit, like this option of transit. Uh, it's like, no, actually the taxis are the only ones you can take. And so now the taxi company or companies, I, I don't know how many there are necessarily, but you know, it's a limited amount. They could basically just say, you know what? Uh, our prices are going to go up. And if you don't like it, you know, screw you. I mean, you can maybe get a car if you'd like, but you know, are you really going to want to invest that much more money when you can just pay the ridiculous prices we're telling you to pay? And the other thing is like the service too. It's like a, a stereotype that taxi drivers are the shadiest pieces of shit on earth mm -hmm. and they can just cut, get away with it. Especially if you're in a country where on one hand, it, it's like a benefit if you're in a country that isn't like the United States where you know, everything's built up where it's basically a walking city or you can have public mm -hmm. transport, which that's another rabbit hole I could go down. But on the other hand, because it's like that, it doesn't even really make sense for you to have a car, even if it is affordable, because of just the uh, you're living on top of each other in apartments and whatnot. So then you're dependent on taxis to get places that aren't like a walk away or you can't get to via public transport. So now they have absolutely no incentive to like, you know, have a decent price or treat you like a human being they can do whatever the fuck they want and get away with it just like the airline companies Ooh. i mean they they do not give a shit about you <laughs> they pretend uh, to they pretend pretty convincingly i, I was they yeah. had me going for a while <laughs> You know, I, I mean, and also, I mean, like uh, any pretty much any like, uh, I mean, especially the government services that you see, but like you can tell like with a DMV, for example, is, you know, like is something that would come to mind. Uh, yeah, those are pieces of shit. So transparent. Yeah, those are pieces of shit. And like, you know, they don't give a shit about you. They make it clear. They make it known. And like, you know, you come in to get, you know, because they force you to come in to get your paperwork and all that and documents sorted. And so you say, well, you know, here's my documents. They say, you don't have this document. I'm like, well, well, not me necessarily, but this is a complaint people have. It's like, you didn't tell me I needed this last time I was here. So why would you tell me now? And they're like, well, sir, you need it. So then you're just kind of screwed. You want to punch that person in the face, but you're like, well, shit, I'm going to go to jail if I do that. So let me just go home and get the paperwork. You come back. They say you need more. You go back. You and it just happens over and over until you have the exact right thing that they're like okay yes we can process this sir oh you need it no i didn't mean that document i meant the other document that looks exactly right. like it but it, it's kind of different by like yep. one letter or some bullshit like that yeah yes did you, did you actually do you actually have a uh, a doctor signed uh, affirmation that your mother's placenta was removed we're gonna actually need that one <laughs> Yeah, sir. This actually greatly impacts the uh, the feasibility of you driving your car today. Mm -hmm. It's really important that we know that this is done. That's the other thing, too. They're like d data farming on you. Yeah. Like, that's the and other sir, benefit. And, and, sir, do you have your uh, C-section license? <laughs> <laughs> Oi, you got a license to be walking in the rain. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But, yeah, like, it's like a self-fulfilling... And the thing is, too, eventually it's going to collapse because it's completely inefficient mm -hmm. in every way, shape and form. And more people are kind of getting onto that. Like one guy I was talking to, he was talking about like the Internet is like the greatest thing that could have happened because now right. you don't have a monopoly on information. The most they can say is, well, that's not the right information. And you <laughs> see this with the misinformation campaign. And somebody brought this up to me a while ago where the term misinformation doesn't imply it's actually wrong. Otherwise, I would just say false information. It implies that it's not good information, mm -hmm. which is like, okay, well, if it's not wrong, why is it not good? Are you saying that even if it's right, it can be wrong? Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Like, very illogical. Uh, 
Jesus. Anyway. Yeah, and you know the thing is, I saw. I, well, actually, not anyway, because I, I actually saw this uh, comment. You know, I, I have <laughs> to go on this anyway because of these retards. You know, the thing is, I saw this like comment section talking about fuck. What was it? It was like, um, yeah, it was about jaws, right? Jaw structure. And so the thing is with babies is that they actually do need to like you know as they're growing older, like eat more fat soluble vitamins, like get a good amount of them as your as your jaws developing, and eat foods that are not just mushy that are harder that you're actually using to you know create a space over time for your wisdom teeth. I actually had my wisdom teeth removed. I did not have a good diet as a kid, not optimal. Uh, and, and unfortunately that's the case, but you know, I, you know, I'm you, whatever. No, but <laughs> in all seriousness, it does help with like keeping a good jaw shape because people that are mouth breather, breathers have terrible looking faces. So at least my physiognomy is, is better. Uh, but you know, the, the, the thing here is that you actually like optimally still would be able to have space for your wisdom teeth. Now people think, because I saw this post, it was like, what did evolution mean by this? And it was like an impacted wisdom tooth. And so people are like, oh, well it was it, that they used to chew through bone or like that people used to have like these wider faces for whatever reason. Right. And so basically there was this guy in the comment section actually talking about what I talk about. And he was like saying, yeah, no, it's actually the fat fact that you need to eat these like tougher foods. Like, you know, you actually need to be developing your jaw. Like since you're like from, from like not from birth specifically, but like once you've, you know, once you're actually able to chew these foods now, I have, now there were different people like saying like, Oh, well, what about, you know, like you think babies are going to eat like bone or whatever, you know, it's like, no, when you wean off the breast milk. And so like, then there were people saying, Oh, well actually, you know, if you look at the, you know, people back in the day, they actually had worse, worse dental health. Uh, they actually had terrible dental health. You see the Neanderthals, you know, it's, it's actually popular within science that they, they had tooth disease. And, and, and because of that, that's actually why they went extinct. And then there was like a smiley face with a fucking, like, you know, the one where it's like the little, like three on the colon, like, it's like the little, like the like cat smiley face. Somebody added that after that shit. I'm like, you fucking, you know, I, I don't even want to say the word you fairy, you know? And so, <laughs> you know, the thing is the guy's still replying to these people because he's actually correct about this talking about like, he's very well read in this. It seems because honestly, he's able to pull up all this information on it. He's like, yeah, no, actually the Neanderthal, the Neanderthal thing was actually more of a, a gum problem. It wasn't actually the teeth themselves that they had like a disease in. And actually it's not even popular within science that they, that what you're saying is true, you know, even then. So like, even then you're wrong on the argument, uh, you know, the, and so basically, uh, he was talking about all this information, but there were people like just saying like, oh, so you think this and that and that. And I mean, honestly, the one that was talking about like, oh, so you think babies are supposed to eat hard foods? And like, you know, it was obviously meant to say like once they've weaned off of the breast milk, like these retards are just like killing me because it's like, how, how dense are you? How, like, why do you think that like you read something like, you know, I, I mean, like you read something from, from like in school or like you're taught something in school or, or like you read something that's like a fucking like, you know, like science paper or something, you know, that, that's like, you know, saying like, this is the official information now. And then you just decide like, yeah, you know, you're right. That is the official information. I'm going to believe this no matter whatever, what other evidence is presented to me. And instead of actually challenging the evidence that's presented to me by breaking down why it could be wrong, I'm just going to start spewing the information I got beforehand and tell you why, you know, why I, you know, not even believe it, but why I decided to imprint that in my mind as factual information with lack of like basis for it. Yeah. I understand where you're coming from, too, because this is like the number one thing that kills people's like ability to think rationally. Like if you mention something that's like somewhat controversial, immediately you'll get someone like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> what, uh, I read otherwise and people told me otherwise. I told I think I told you this the other day where I was talking to somebody about the fucking uh, I don't know if I brought this up on the other podcast or not. No, I guess I didn't. I think I brought it up in like something else. But I was talking to somebody about the the fucking sugar thing, and mm -hmm. he was talking about how, uh, shit, what was it? It was that added sugars in particular are the problem, but regular sugar isn't. And I was like, okay, your body processes processes it the same way, so how's yeah. the problem? And I also brought up like, okay, well, if it's sugar that's just been added, how is adding sugar to something any worse than it just being there? natural right if it's processed the same way that doesn't make any sense and he was like well because when you add it it's lacking of these nutrients and this makes it and i'm like that still okay so if i eat like a donut you know assuming a donut doesn't have all the other toxins in it or whatever mm -hmm. like using it as an example of an added sugar product and then i just eat something else that has the nutrients you're talking about would that make it any better or worse couldn't that just be the same thing? My body's processing it the same way. That does, still doesn't make sense. And then, like, eventually the argument came down to, yeah, but, you know, I've always heard that that added sugars are bad. And then I'm, like, right there. Okay, that explains it. That, that's the issue. It's, oh, my God, I fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Every time I bring up anything about 
at, at anything that's like against the orthodoxy on the monopoly on information that exists in any kind of field, anything at all, even something as stupid as like the fucking musician circle with like guitars and shit. And you actually test it with like actual, you know, evidence and shit like that. People go off the walls in circles in ways that you wouldn't even imagine to try to justify something that doesn't make sense if mm -hmm. you actually look at it critically. But because it's been ingrained into their worldview by some, okay, I almost said the word, some loser in a lab <laughs> coat that definitely isn't paid by the government to say one thing is good because it may or may not be detrimental to the greater public. Then it's like, well, he said it was right. He's got a degree. Uh, what if I get a degree and I say the same shit? Is that suddenly true now? What the fuck? Yeah. And I mean, like, so basically, like, you know, I wonder if these people would say like, oh, yeah, but the artificial sweeteners are fine. Right. And like, you know, what would the reason be? Oh, because there's not sugar. But, you know, the thing is, like, when it comes to uh, like actual like consumption of artificial sweeteners, the sort of um, like disconnect between the presented sweetness versus like the actual carbohydrate content of the food you're eating would actually be worse for insulin resistance than just eating some sugar. <laughs> like eating sugar is not going to cause insulin resistance, but eating artificial sweeteners would because of that. So the body's basically getting confused by it and over time becoming more resistant. Um, and, and you know, That's also like exactly like, what I said too. And right. Like, and so like, and so the gut also has like a hard time, like, uh, like with like uh, the quorum sensing is negatively affected by the, the, these, these, uh, artificial sweeteners as well. And so the thing is like, you know, like we've had, uh, we've had, well, we had him on the show, Ignis. Right. And he was saying like, he, th he would rather have artificial sweeteners than sugar. Right. That's what he was saying. Like he was saying, like, he'd rather have an art uh, energy drink with artificial sugars than, or artificial I sweetener. Don't recall. I, re I remember him saying that he was picking up a monster, not for himself. Oh, for his girlfriend or for the fiance? Well, at the time, I guess girlfriend probably. But yeah, yeah, he was saying she Wait, drinks the those. Last we... episode? He didn't say this on the last episode. This is just something you know. We saw him, and that's what he was doing. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah, I do think I might point, remember that. Point being, he was we were discussing like sort of like why it would be bad to have like aspartame or something like that, or like you know these drinks that don't have any sugar. And I think he might have been getting her one with no sugar, and so we were questioning him on that one. I think. Like both of us. Yeah, I think we were asking him about why. And then he said, I'd rather have like artificial sweeteners. And you were like, brah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. that is something I would say. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like what even what even are people referring to? Like when they're, they're saying like, you know, um, like processed sugars, right? Like, you know, because like usually they're just thinking of like, oh, well, you know, cane sugar is like a processed sugar, right? Like, you know, so like they, they just don't like that in general. But like, you know, usually when I talk to people about this, they literally mean anything that's not in fruit. Or right. Something like that. Like, like a processed sugar is something that the sugar has been taken out of, right? You know, apparently, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so, so me extracting the sugar out of a strawberry suddenly yeah. makes it awful now. Because when Somehow. I look at processed sugars, all I really found is like the main thing it tells me is that, like, you know, it comes from like cane or beets. So you're talking about sugar. You're just talking about extracted sugar. sugar, right? Like pure sugar. What is wrong with that? What do you mean, like, pure sugar is the problem, right? <laughs> like, here's uh, the thing if they meant something like, if they actually meant like, artificial sugars mm -hmm. or whatever like i don't even or even like or even like sweeteners that are like because like you know for example like monk fruit would have the same problem where like you know it's it's additionally sweeter like stevia these things are additionally sweeter than the actual carbohydrate content and uh, somebody with like saladino was asking like well we actually would need to probably see like how if if, the, if there actually is any difference between or from these if we if we don't want it to just assume that they're like the artificial sweeteners in the same sense because it they present the same issue and so we don't necessarily know like if they would be our right to consume it's not necessarily that they do it's just you know that we don't really have a way of determining how these are different or yet i guess that i guess there's not like a lot of information about this but like then the actual artificial sweeteners so you know something like a sugar that is extracted from something or like i guess a sweetener that is extracted from something like stevia or monk fruit yes that would actually be like sort of like a sugar that i would not want to consume because i think it would it may very well propose the same problem right oh shit i didn't even know stevia was was like a, a plant thing i thought that was like a lab I'd, thing yeah, I, I originally had thought that as well, but I looked it up. Yeah, it is. Huh. Yeah, I mean, to tie it all up in a nice bow, basically the issue is it's an appeal to authority in the most schizophrenic way possible where people don't even understand the idea. Like, people know the appeal to authority fallacy, but they don't recognize it when it's staring them in the face. Mm -hmm. Now, Which one more thing. The main it issue. was... It was just my friend, like the one that goes, bro, you know, that guy, right? He, every I mean, time technically I I'm the name, guy that goes, bro. 
No, he's bro, bro. Oh, you he's know, bro. You're bro. Yeah, bro. He's bro. You know, uh, do you hear that plane in the background? I hear this plane. It's just really loud. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you were talking too much. Yeah, it's gone. It was like very bass heavy uh, anyway, so it probably wouldn't have been picked up too much. But oh, you didn't being, catch it. I meant I... like we were talking too much about things. Oh, I thought you just meant like, you know, uh, the, the talking is what silenced the plane noise. No, that would be a good thing anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Well, anyway, point being, um, unless he died, guy, bro. Right. Every time I see him, it's like, he's telling me, cause we're talking about diet. Anything. If, if last time he might've been more receptive to what I was actually saying, but like he, every time he asks me about food, he's like, wait, so you say you eat more saturated fat. Isn't that the bad one? <laughs> every time we've, ta- <laughs> we've had this conversation so many times. And the first, every time he just brings that up right away, he's like, <laughs> You know, I don't, it's like without fail. Is but, it like verbatim know, every time? Yes. It's just that exact <laughs> question. And so, you know, I keep repeating this information, but the last time I actually did talk about him with it, we went on it for a while. And so like, he actually did kind of understand where I was coming from. He started to, at least I think I'm breaking the crack there or something like that. So I was talking about the products that come from like polyunsaturated fats and the problem with them. And so like, you know, if anything, like he's starting to remember a little bit now, he can't really remember like the term linoleic acid or anything, but now he's like, the wheels are turning where he's like, Oh, you said it has some sort of like acid. Cause I was saying like gluten like has like phytic acid or like product or usually things with yeah gluten have like phytic acid. And so then he was asking, he's like, but what didn't you say there was like another acid? I'm like, no, that's the seed oils. That's like the linoleic acid. He's like, Oh, okay. You know? Uh, so, you know, he's, he's catching on a little there. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I had to give, like plenty of examples as far as like, you know, like hibernative states and all that having to do with like animals that have more accumulated po- like polyunsaturated fat or monounsaturated fat um, kind of talk about like the diet like that uh, and versus like heart disease talk about like how countries that are eating higher saturated fat have actually lower heart disease. And so like, you know, giving a lot more examples was more helpful than just saying like this food does this to the body, like giving, giving those examples of like, Bruh. you know, <laughs> Yeah, giving those examples of like, you know, this is how people eat and this is the results and like, you know, saying like, you know, this is, you know, how it shows in animals and all that, you know, was a little more helpful to him as like examples rather than just saying like, you know, this is what it happens when you consume it. So I understand why that would be more uh, convincing right. to your average person because it, it happens to it happened to me before and mm-hmm. like other topics as well. But at the same time this kind of proves or like shows sheds a light on something that people I know no offense to him. He's a cool guy, but like generally speaking, people are losing the ability to think abstractly. Mm -hmm. The fact that you get to kind of point at something and say, this is what happens. It, uh, this actually goes into the other topic I'm going to get into, but, uh, it's what people call concrete bound where you're only able to, you're basically a materialist. You're only Mm -hmm. able to understand something once you see it happening, basically, as opposed to the concepts or processes that make it happen. Yeah. I was discussing something with a family member about like contributions because we were talking about like Western society and like, you know, well, (laughs) Western fallen billions must die. Well, yeah, that kind of was a little bit of the conversation, but you know, the, the, the funny (laughs) thing is like, uh, you know, I was bringing up, you know, not necessarily like seriously, but I was just kind of saying like, uh, cause we were talking first about like Mexico, like, and like, you know, other, like, you know, other countries abroad, how like they decorate their houses. Cause we were like in a steakhouse and we we're looking at the wall. It was like orange. Right. So he's like, you know, what do you think about painting a house that color? And I was like, you know, the thing is, that's something that like Mexicans do, right? You know, you see that they have like those, like it, it looks, and I, I kind of got to the point that it kind of makes them look like they're in poverty as well as them actually being in poverty. But you know, they're usually like a little older, like the houses. So it, that kind of contributes mm-hmm. to it. But I'm just saying like, you know, America or like the West has a very like white interior. Right. And it's very like, you know, nice and like a- aesthetically pleasing. Whoa. Whoa. What are you trying to say? <laughs> but I was, I was literally saying like, I mean, not again, not necessarily like seriously, seriously, but I was saying like, you know, uh, th- it's like a very white thing to do. You know what I mean? No, so it it's is, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so I I was just saying, like, uh, I mean, generally speaking, it is. I'm just saying, like, you know, I wasn't saying, like, oh, well, it's because they're white that they do. I'm just saying, like, it is like something that white people do. And it is something that like ingrained into right certain types of Western culture that white interiors are more aesthetically pleasing for whatever reason. Well, yeah. And I was saying, like, you know, yeah, exactly. That 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 is a a point there. But anyway, I was basically saying, like, um, I guess at least a lot of the values that make like, you know, Western society come from like the Greeks. Right. So I was saying like they had a big contribution as far as like logical thought, you know, and reason and and, like, you know, philosophically speaking a lot, like those contributions are what made a lot of, you know, what's good about today. Like uh, at least like, you know, uh, like 
development wise, technologically, or like, you know, as far as advancements go, and as far as like the proper moral value is not necessarily every single moral value, but I'm just saying like a lot of that was sourced from there. And so like, you know, this person was telling me like, well, you know, like, you know, that you're, that's ignoring all the contributions of like these other like peoples and all that. And like, you know, basically they don't teach you about that in school as much, but you know, I, my point was just that like, it's like this contribution specifically philosophically, the, the idea that these values and ideas uh, essentially set the stage for, for the, the life that people can live today. And the, and like, you know, the understanding of the world that people can have today, you know, that, that sort of, that sort of like, you know, leads into, uh, a lot of these like furthering of humanity itself, I was saying was the important contribution. Whereas I was being told, well, what about like, you know, these, like the, 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 like the buildings and stuff people built or like, you know, the, the, the cultures they had, like the foods or something, or like, you know, Mm. maybe like, you know, like other aspects of, yeah, yeah, exactly. The very material stuff. So what I was saying, you know, what my point there was, is like, I was very abstract with it saying like, this is what, like, essentially like, um, everything material is downstream from the actual, like, you know, conceptual and philosophical side of it. And so basically like, you know, his point was just like, Oh, well, we are ignoring these other material contributions. My point wasn't about the material contributions. Yeah. You know, that is actually brings me up to another point, uh, or another like anecdote that I had, you are like a friendly neocon friend, the <laughs> one that you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. So every time we have a debate on the topic of like, he's a big Roman guy, even though he's not, he's recently got into it a bit, but he's not a big like ancient history guy. Whereas I am, but I'm kind of losing it because I haven't really touched it for a while. Mm-hmm. But I, I've always been of the opinion the Greeks are pretty much the most important civilization that's ever existed. Mm-hmm. And he was always saying, well, actually, the Romans, because the Romans did what the Greeks did better. And us- the argument is usually, well, I go for the philosophical thing and he he despises philosophy, which is, that's another thing in- unto itself. But basically his argument is always, well, the Romans had better military might and stuff like that. Like he's always saying, th- he's like the same kind of argument. And I'm right. saying, well, yeah, but the military might of the Romans, as you admitted, is copied from the Greeks. And the only mm-hmm. reason the Greeks were able to have that in the first place is because they set down the basis for the idea of thinking logically as opposed mm-hmm. to just following cultural norms or traditions like even if even if the greeks uh like the ancient greeks only had philosophy and like you know they were living in huts they were like they didn't have like the proper nutrition they didn't have any other like great art they didn't have anything remotely you know materially Mm -hmm. valuable whatsoever but they only had the philosophy that you can think independently and critically about things you don't have to follow the norm just because it's a norm even if that alone was the only good thing from their civilization, they would still be the greatest civilization on earth because of the possibilities that come from that. Yeah. And honestly, even if I'm, that hypothetical is invalid, because necessarily if you have that, you will thrive in one way or another. So, but anyway, yeah, it, it comes down to the idea of simply materialism, which implies a sort of skepticism, even if you go down the religious route, which I'm assuming is the person you're talking to was going mm-hmm. down that path. Uh, because, I'm not going to go down another bashing religion thing, but basically when you have an all powerful God that can shape reality, basically reality is subject to his whim. So it's still conscious consciousness over matter type thing, as opposed to, you know, the world is the way it is and you need to adapt to the way the world is type thing. Mm -hmm. So it's still a form of skepticism versus the other way of not rationalism or mysticism where only the mind exists, but a combination of the two where you're aware that the way things are the way they are, but you have an ability to understand and use that understanding in a way where you can benefit the most out of the situation that reality is given the materials and situation that you're in, in that scenario. But most people, and especially in like modern Western uh, cultures, you'll have it where, and I would argue it's probably on on purpose at this point, uh, a scenario where people are getting pushed more and more where even like something like a basic conversation on like, well, what do you want to do today? Or like, what do you think about uh, like politics or whatever? It's entirely based on the material. Well, this figure says this and the other. Therefore, this figure says this and the other. And actually, if you look at this, that and the other and it's like, OK, well, and you'll see this a lot with like studies there, especially in sociology. There's something called like the great replication crisis or whatever, where the studies say one thing, but they don't map onto reality because Mm -hmm. of how many factors are isolated or whatever like you could say something like well if we look at the housing crisis it says that this is happening and it's like okay well what about this that and the other factor that's in 
thing. Even within the materialist mindset, you're not taking into account other factors because you need a sort of abstract view of things in order to even account for that. Like you yeah. look at the study and you just say, see, the study says X. Well, that must be the truth. Well, maybe it's X with a, a, an exponent of two or something like that. But you wouldn't even think to like, look at that because you don't have the abstract faculties of thinking beyond what the study says in most cases. And then yeah, on I the mean, other side, these studies can't really account for the actions of man. And there's there's too many like, you know, cases in which people are just acting differently. And, you know, based on the like, I mean, obviously they're they're employing different means at different times and it's always it's ever changing. So it's like it's right. not even something that like a computer could approximate. And then like the other side of that is like the countries that aren't considered Western where they're, you know, sticking to cultural traditions and all that and the other. And that's generally they like the way I describe it is a trip on like true ideas for the most part, but they don't actually know why they're good. And because they don't actually know why they're good, they still fall into things that are just kind of accepted as good, despite them not actually having any rational basis of being good, or they're just actually evil, but they can't like reason why it's bad anyway, because they're kind of just going off of a quote unquote gut feeling. What sort of reference are you making to like when you, when you say that sort of thing, like, like which uh, like, you know, what kind of uh, like people are you saying? like any kind of people where it's like oh the west is evil you need to return to christianity mm -hmm. where and you can see this with oh, the, see. the conservatives like anytime they they bring up like uh like the whole like uh male loneliness like red pill type shit it's always like well marriage is good why is it good because god said it's good okay well mm -hmm. why does god say it's good because god's good so they're unable to acknowledge like the the sort of logical foundations of it and instead they're just going back to the idea that like you know essentially what the greeks were rejecting when they were saying like it, it comes with you know it come with cultural norms you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know it, essentially like you know not necessarily just taking those straight up and uh you know just saying because they are the case because this is what is practiced therefore it is good right it, it's like basically circular logic it's good why is it good god's good why is god yeah. good because he's good like because there's no god. actual logical framework why is he good because he's god why is he god it's essentially he's good. an assault on logic as a whole because they see an issue with what people portray as actual logic mm -hmm. and again i think at this point it's probably done on purpose america is good because america is great is that an actual quote i think that's hillary if i'm not mistaken that's so i remember seeing that as an example like given for circular logic Holy shit. <laughs> Let me see. I'm, I'm just, I swear it's her, but let, let's just fact check that real quick. Let's see. So America is good because America is great. Uh, let's see. It's a tribute. Oh, well, I mean, there's a further, there's a further quote. Let's see. Well, uh, okay. So there's a further quote. I guess there's like an actually original one. It's like uh, the quote, America is great because America is good. And then it's like a semicolon. It's like, and if America ever ceases to be good, she will no longer be great it is attributed to Alexis de Tocqueville. But it says it's, but it's not true. Oh, so I guess it's not actually from that. I, I don't know. So apparently let's see. Uh, actually we can look at the Wikipedia for this. Let's see. Let me look up uh, in this page, Clinton. Okay. So, uh, huh. yeah, he just never said it. Apparently, President's President Clinton, uh, former Speaker Gring Gringridge, and a lot of other politicians have constantly repeated that quote. Yeah. I, okay. So, apparently, Bill Clinton said it. Maybe Hillary said it because of that, you know, getting it from Bill. Uh, have constantly repeated that quote, and it's not true. So apparently, I don't know where the quote came from. So apparently it's not Alexis de Tocqueville. It's <clears throat> Alexis Charles and Lee Claire Comte de Tocqueville. So he's French. Oh. So that explains it. But he says it's not from him. Uh, is it not? Let me see. But you, okay, so here's, I'm, I'm, oh my God, you have to log into Facebook to see it. Oh, no, well, here's Hillary saying it. Let's see if I can remove this login information here from Facebook. <laughs> I'm not logged in, but it like it has like the autofill stuff. So I'm just kind of like, eh. you have a Facebook. Yes. Damn. I remember. Why did I set that up? I think it might have been a branding thing, but also like I had like these like local events I wanted to go to, and they they had like Facebook pages. So why would you do that? Why would you force somebody to make a Facebook? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, let's see what we got here. 
let me share it and then maximize the screen before it goes on. So, I mean, I have control over that, but let's see if we can, let's see if it, it has the right thing. Let me actually just read this real quick. Let me read the caption. So Hillary Clinton in the end. Okay. Doesn't get to be America. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We got it. That's the right one. Okay. Let's see Hillary. Let's see the Hill dog. Oh, it's not playing. Come on. Turd sandwich. What is wrong? Why is it not? To what Donald Trump and it comes down to what Donald Trump doesn't get. America is great because America is good. (laughs) So you have here a politician just using that circular reasoning right there. Uh, I think that says a a lot. Actually, people are supposed to cheer to. This is something that a crowd actually did cheer to. I think. That says that like clip says so much on its own. I don't think anybody in their right mind, whether you're left, right, center, don't give a shit. Anybody says, yeah, this is great. This is the greatest thing we have right now without any kind of nuance whatsoever. But the fact that she says that, well, come on, the the flight logs, bro. It says so (laughs) much. And then the fact that you have people cheering about it, it's like, yeah, this is the state we're in. Somebody said the most retard shit. <clears throat> Somebody said the most neuro shit. What, what is Neurotic? it? Neurotic? Neural divergent? Neurotic? No, no, no. Like the, the new term they use for neurodivergent. Art. Yeah, yeah. Somebody says the most neurodivergent thing I've ever heard in my life. And people start like cheering for that as if they just saw somebody get beheaded in the Coliseum, which, by the way, you should bring that back. But anyway. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. It's like putting like a mirror up to like an autistic person. Like <laughs> it's like the meme. Am I autistic? And like it's like a normal guy and then he walks with <laughs> the mirror. He's got like that yeah. syndrome or something. Uh but yeah. but I actually did sort of that conversation like it, uh, it was brought up like sort of you know as a statement after I was talking about you know the values that are more prominent in the West at least they have been you know you know like more than anywhere else like you know historically you know but I was told you know but, but look at you know where people are now like you know the, basically the West has fallen you know there's no morals right and so you know I kind of questioned that but it, apparently the statement here is that like well I mean it, it's like public education apparently is declining compared to like places like China like and and you know they can just like censor like you know uh, social media whereas kids here have like sort of unfiltered access and then apparently like John Cena got naked or something like on TV what yeah apparently John Cena got naked on TV I haven't seen this. Isn't John Cena the guy that's like known for shilling for China though? Wouldn't that kind of can't even see John Cena? How would we see him if he's naked? Okay, so it was a week ago at the Oscars, and basically the uh, the envelope, I think, where uh, you know, let's see, yeah, costume design. You want to see the picture here? He's not like naked. It's just his like his body covered. You know, his his crotch is covered. Let's see. Hold on. I just gotta zoom out a little bit. There's a lot of John Cena here. Okay. Uh, let's see. It's a lot of John Cena. Don't, here. don't peek. Don't peek. Let's get it on the screen. And there it is. The little envelope says costume design there. What the fuck? But this is him announcing the, uh, I guess, the winner at the Oscars. So was he not wearing anything besides the sign? You know, I'm not even sure if he's wearing anything under that, but this is the Oscars. So, you know, the point being there is, you know, apparently it was supposed to be like, because this is something that families could watch. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, there isn't like a, a lot of degeneracy or like, you know, basically depravity or like, you know, uh, you know, obviously like, le- or, you know, the sort of woke values that essentially could also be attributed to the people that are religious, as you would know, like, you know, the mysticism, the altruism, the collectivism, you know, I'm not saying these things are, are not rampant, uh, today, right. You know, they, they obviously are, but I'm just saying like, it's, it, you know, to say like, Oh, well look at things now. It doesn't really like track back to, uh, look at the values that were proper and were actually the things that, you know, that were right, that people got right. And, you know, it, uh, why would it not necessarily be the religious influence that is the thing that uh, has is at least in part responsible for what what is happening today? 
the the sort of illogical thought like if you were to say like what do you think more likely caused today's illogical thought some logical thought or illogical thought well the logical solution is that the illogical thought was the greater contributor you can actually see it too like more jesus christ i you know all right (laughs) there's beforehand when you're like in the bubble of like mainstream politics it's really hard to like look outside and see the flaws of whichever side you're on but once you're outside of it you're like oh my god these people are neurodivergent Mm uh and you can see it like especially on like the whole uh i guess sex dynamics thing where the christian narrative basically is oh well you were a whore on OnlyFans. well as long as you accept christ you're good now (laughs) Yeah. Which, but any like rational person would be like, yeah, but like, wouldn't you at least be a little hesitant if you know, wouldn't you choose someone that didn't have that past if you had the choice as opposed to? Mm-hmm. And then, like, the argument I've always heard is, yeah, but you're sinful too. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't show my butthole online for five bucks. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> I'm not spready Gibbs now. Like, <laughs> now, thing is, right? I, apparently, I didn't even know this until now. I saw this reel where this guy was saying, you know, like, uh, are you are you exercising during Ramadan and you're afraid you're not going to hit your, uh, you know, like goals as far as praying? Well, it's okay. Just say this when you do your reps for every or for all your hundred reps, say this hadith, uh, subhanallah, 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 and so like, you know, whatever it is. Uh, but he's like, and you, if you do this, you will be washed away of all your sins. So it's like, wait, so they have exactly what the Christians have? If I just say that a hundred times a day, I'm fine. I don't have to do anything. Like faith alone, basically. Well, yeah, basic. Well, exactly. But you just have to say that Hadith or whatever it is like a hundred times a day and you're fine. You're washed away of your sins. So so you just get homework and you're like, ah, okay. (laughs) It's like, uh, it's like, uh, when, um, like, well, I mean, first of all, you could just say like, you know, this amount of Hail Marys is like the equivalent in Christianity, but you know, going, uh, when Butters goes to the DMV in South Park, and like he's like what was it like you know the lady he's like confessing his his sins to her and then she tells him to do like a hundred what is it like america's america like god bless america something like that like it's i forgot exactly what it was but you know something having to do with like you know a national like a song or something like that like some or like you know some sort of phrase and basically he's just as long as he did a hundred of those you'd be fine yeah like it's really ironic how every time somebody tries to convince me of a religion, they always bring up these deep philosophical things like, well, if the people were really irrational, wouldn't they? People are not irrational. They wouldn't just choose this religion because it happened to be the thing right there. And like, look at this. Look at this story where they chose them. Like, there are a few stories in like these religious books where like they do actually uphold values. But then like it comes back down to like, well, yeah, like faith alone. If you just say this and you're good, it's like, but you know, to even to that argument that it's like, why would people choose this religion? It's like most people are just born into it. Most, most families it, just raise their kids with it. And then that's why they believe it. It's so funny how nobody acknowledges this whatsoever. Like at the very least, I, I mean, I don't really, you know, obviously I don't really think you should be converting to a religion, uh, whatever it is, because I mean, they're all nonsense, even if it is something that's like non-typical to the area you live in. But at least if you're converting to like Hinduism and you're like an American white guy, You've at least gone through the process of acknowledging that, okay, I don't have to be a Christian just because everybody else here is a Christian Mm -hmm. type thing. But even, but most people that are in those religions, they don't ever come to that conclusion that, oh, well, you know, I always thought, you know, Jesus, I'm like thinking of like seven different things at the same time. They never come to the realization that the likelihood of them being, you know, Muslim or whatever, if they were born in fucking fin well, hold on, that's not a good example now. Uh <laughs> the likelihood of them being Christian if they were born in like Saudi Arabia is like negative 10 percent. Mm-hmm. Like there's no way in hell that would have happened at <laughs> all. But they're like, well, actually, it just made the most sense to me. It, it, it's it, because Christianity, yeah, and you happen to be in the most Christian country on earth saying this. I, I wonder what th- would have happened if you weren't yeah. born here. Like, come on, bro. Right. And I mean, like, you know, the thing is, like, maybe they'll try and retort by saying, like, well, you know, what about your values? Like, you wouldn't you would think different values if you were in these other countries. But, you know, the counter to that would be, I mean, probably because you were raised in it. But the thing is, if you actually think about things logically, like, you know, you should be uh, at the place that makes the most sense, not just to yourself, but actually like 
like with reason, like with logic, like, you know, I should, I should be able to conclude that like, you know, or I should be able to at least like, you know, track back why I believe the things that I do, uh, you know, to something logical and to, to, you know, to maybe if I didn't have the, like these same values, if I lived somewhere else, well then maybe I just was raised in an illogical society where I was less inclined to doing that in the first place. Yeah. It reminds me, like we were arguing with the, that one guy we know about this kind of thing. And <laughs> Uh, we gotta, we gotta like ev- stop every every other episode just going after religion. But I mean, it, it's such an easy topic that like kind of comes up uh, over like repetitively. But like we were questioning him on the religion thing, and he basically just went double down on like logic not being real, therefore religion is real. <laughs> so he didn't have to like come into conflict with the idea that maybe his religion isn't all it's cracked up to be, logically speaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we've gotten to this conversation before, but it's like, you know, a lot of these people who actually think philosophically about things and then reach this point where like nothing even makes sense to them anymore, uh, you know, because of because of sort of the rabbit holes they went down. But it, it has been from the ideas of philosophers who are not logical thinkers, uh, you know, they, they get to these terrible conclusions that drive them into the hands of, of these religions because they're so scared of what, you know, this abyss is around them in their minds that they're like, well, I need something to comfort me again. And, you know, they, they think, well, you know, maybe if I just believe in something, because they're not at the point where they're thinking like through a logical train of thought, obviously, even because they're at that point. So that kind of implies that in the first place. But, you know, they, they just start thinking, well, what can essentially make me feel better about the life I'm living or like, you know, the place I'm in or who I am or whatever? You know, how can I feel like I'm not alone here? How can I, you know, a lot of these things may come to mind, but basically like they're they're driven to religion because of that, because it's like, you know, this is the, you you essentially just believe it. And then once you believe it, uh, I mean, at least you, you, you believe that you feel at peace because you're like, well, you know, at least now I have something guiding me. At least now I have something that's like, you know, I don't feel lost anymore. I don't feel like, you know, um, like the, the, these sort of like irrational ideas that I've picked up are the same as they once were, because now I can just have faith in these other ideas that, uh, you know, I didn't necessarily have to conclude logically. I didn't have to do the work to backtrack anything. All I had to say was, I believe and now, now here I am, you know, I, I can, I can feel at peace with myself finally complete and total contradiction yet it's the most unrecognized version of a contradiction ever and the thing is too once you get to that point you're already acknowledging that one objective like reality and judgment and uh standards on what is or isn't true logically is a possible and b good so on that alone you already recognize that the path that you went down on a philosophical basis where you're coming to all these conclusions is already false. So why do you need a religion to say that for you instead of just getting to the conclusion logically? Mm -hmm. Like you're already giving into the fact that, yeah, there's something wrong with the way I was thinking beforehand. Yet you're not dropping it. You're just kind of putting it to the side whenever you feel upset about it. Right. So why not just feel like that all the time and go down a path where it's like, well, I don't actually have to believe that nothing I see or feel is real. I can actually get to the point where, you know, everything I see is real. It's probably closer to what I'm perceiving than not at the very least. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) I don't know, man, these, these people like, you know, how do they get to the point? I mean, I get, I, 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 I don't know. Like I, I was going to say, how do they get to the point where like the religion makes sense to them? Like, I mean, I kind of explained it, but it's just the case of like, I don't know. You're just, you're just so fucked logically that you're like, yeah, let me just not continue to be logical. Like, how do they not reach the conclusion that like, maybe there just needs to be some way in the way that they're thinking? Like, you know, are they just, are they just so lost that it's like, you can't, they can't even reason that much. Yeah. It's like, like if I'm working on like a, a, a project of some sort like i'm building like a, a tree house outside for my family or whatever and you know i keep running into problems where things aren't staying or like the boards are falling apart or whatever do i just keep going with the same thing i'm doing or do i go back and look at the instructions and see okay wait maybe i went wrong somewhere here and like any rational person would say yeah no you should probably look at the instructions or like retrace your steps see what you're doing wrong that isn't working out but then when it comes to something like philosophy or your worldview that just does not even come into their mind as a possibility it's like wait what something might be wrong no no it has to be wrong i've been told it's the right you leave the materials out and you start saying that it will happen they will they will be put together i will go outside one day and it'll all be there 
put together a treehouse. Exactly. Nature willing. <laughs> Grass willing. You know, that thing will be there. Uh, we will wait, have yeah. an apartment in the sky. <laughs> a deluxe apartment in the sky there. One day. Mashallah. <laughs> Subhanallah. Look at the Ummah today. <laughs> oh, this brother will not be posting ice spice. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah. All right. You got anything else? This brother uh, does not want to say his prayers, <laughs> but he wants the approval from Fatima's dad to see her in his lair. Subhanallah. Look at the Ummah today. I've been loving those Muslim reels you've been sending. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's this black guy too. It's kind of surprising, you know, I mean, you know, well, not necessarily, but like, you know, what, what is with the uh, black adoption of Islam? Uh, so there's a precedent for it in like Africa, but that kind of, well, like, like uh, sub-Saharan Africa, not like uh, North Africa. Cause that's, that's obvious. I think a lot of that got erased a bit, not entirely, but a little bit once the Europeans started colonizing Africa. And, you know, obviously they spread um, their watered down version of Christianity and not even the good kind either. But anyway, uh, so that exists. But like when you're talking about, I'm assuming you're talking about like people in Western countries yeah. adopting it. Yeah. I think it's the same thing as like, uh, it's not really any different from people like finding God again. Cause I, believe for the most part of like american history at least and european history too for like the romantic period people were dropping religion in droves but it didn't necessarily come equipped with accepting the illogical kind of orthodoxy and academia that we have nowadays uh and now people are realizing uh it didn't come with it no not in the same way it don't come with it don't (laughs) do you see the one where it's like Chinese restaurants when they don't come with egg roll. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is he's like, okay, okay. And he gives a look. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, like it was a slower process of accepting that kind of like <clears throat> neurodivergent orthodoxy on a- academia. But nowadays that's so ingrained in the culture where it's like, well, Christianity being part of western culture kind of adopts it at the same time and this is gonna what i was gonna say too like the idea of like the prodigal son thing where you'll have a whore on only fans and you just say well that was in the past and then like they'll still keep up their only fans page and they'll be like well she's still healing and you're still a sinner so who are you to judge which is oh my god the mental gymnastics But then you have something like Islam, where they still kind of have the same thing, I'm pretty sure. But it's not nearly as bad as Christianity has it in re- nowadays, where, y- you know, it's the meme of like, Abdul, get the rocks. <laughs> where there's less of like a... Uh, this a one's on Allah. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about the Squidward? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Where he has the rock instead of the pizza. That's great. (laughs) But Islam, it has like this, at least now, or the way, at least in the extreme versions that exist in the, uh, like the homeland of it, like the Middle East, which is kind of getting faded away nowadays, actually, slowly but surely. uh, It has much less of a anything goes kind of mentality. It has more of a, oh, you're a whore. Well, you had a nice life type thing, which Mm -hmm. it's still a bit over the top, but at the same yeah. time, people are seeking for some kind of rigid standard to life as opposed yeah. to this like solipsistic anything goes skepticism that is inherent to anything in Western society and is now bleeding into Christianity now as well. If you think so about the, it, if you just have a middle ground, then it just, I mean, that's not even much better. You know, it's just, but if those are the two options and you're just looking for something in between, it's like, it doesn't get much better as you go from one to the other. No, not really. It's like, well, you sin once, die, or well, you sin once, I don't care. Yeah. Like, come on. So what's the middle ground? <laughs> you just get half a beating? You get half beat to death? Do you, you go like old school Catholicism and you just get like a little lashings every now and yeah. then? Exactly. Which, I mean, I by think the they way, like that. Catholicism still still winning. They still might the be best into one. that, you don't think? 
Oh, they absolutely are. Exactly. Don't whip me. You know, when you become a mystic like that, you kind. Of <laughs> Why did he sound like that? Because that's what the the girls say. Oh, say oh okay. Oh, I thought you were talking like impersonating a priest or something. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that uh that camp counselor from south park where it's like you know the gay one uh where it's like he's like hello children yeah, <laughs> yeah. the gay camp <laughs> yeah and he was like i was i had attraction to men but i had to get it out and he's how did he say like he was like um i don't know i don't God, remember how he God said it hammered it out of me or something like that yeah yeah <laughs> i had to stamp my foot down and man up <laughs> <laughs> you're i think the like a punchline to that episode too is like every time they showed that counselor some kid like shot himself or whatever. <laughs> well it was just in the camp in general it was like every time they say something that is just like geez like you know this is terrible <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know you know like is sending kids to a camp the best option to help them uh see the light no not really you know especially when not you got to- not to say that you know like you know we have our views on uh on how people are born right you know and so it's like you know it doesn't necessarily align with what you know a lot of people think but uh you know maybe you should just have a talking with your kid maybe you should have shown your kid the uh the logical way of thinking and maybe maybe things wouldn't have turned out this way and you know maybe maybe you shouldn't send them to a camp if if you did the wrong thing uh you know that's just a little piece of advice for you you should have took your your boy once he hit the ripe age of 18 to ye old club of the strip I would fix them Take right up. Mexico. You know, actually, uh, I was watching, you know, one of those Anthony Bourdain shows where he travels around and he was talking to some Greek guy and the Greek guy was like, yeah, all, all men cheat. So what I did is I took my boys once they were of age to a, a brothel and got it mm-hmm. out of their system until until they were good. <laughs> until they were good. So it was like over yeah. and over. <laughs> yeah, it was implied that it was more than one time. <laughs> oh, hell, you know. I mean, whatever works. What a father. That father is looking out for his boys. He doesn't want them cheating. That's true. Yeah. Eddie's looking out for uh, his daughter-in-law, too, if you think about it. <laughs> what did he do with the daughter-in-law? Oh, are you mean like the... Yeah, the... yeah they're not okay, going to cheat. See. I see. So, yeah, he's saving her from being cheated on. Yeah. I was just going to say, I thought you were going to, I thought you were going to say he did her until it was over until she didn't feel like doing it. Like before they got married or before they got together, you know, that's the thing. Like he'll be like, Oh no, 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 here, I'll get it out of you. Don't worry. Hey, you, I know you're going to want to cheat. So, you like, know, before you get married to my son, let me just, you know, yeah. get it out of your system. And this is what I tell my son, you know, the alpha eats first, you know, <laughs> the rest of the, the alpha eats, eats later. first, the rest of the pack eats later. Yeah, exactly. The alpha has the food first. The alpha has the women first. And then the rest of the pack gets to take some if they so please. <laughs> but if the alpha wants it all, he gets it all. He says, fuck him. That's what it's like being the top G. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wh- what was it? Uh, I was watching some video from him. I forgot what it was. But yeah, no, he, he said some shit like Andrew Tate said some shit like... Uh, it was like sparkling water. Yeah, that was a good one where he's like, you know, you got to test your friends. You got to put up your, uh, you know, put all their glasses with sparkling water. And, uh, you know, you have them drink from it at the dinner table. You raise a glass and say, yeah, you guys drink. Uh, and, you know, if, if one of the guys says, what is this? It says bubbles. You cut them off immediately. <laughs> Some shit like that. It was, it was it's just, it's good. It's good trolling. He does a little trolling. You remember when you had that anime phase where he was posting like uh, anthropomorphic wolves and shit? <laughs> there was that one where he was posting that anime girl. It's like, you know, if any woman shows interest, you uh, cut ties immediately. She's an agent of the state. It was like in like the impact font caption over the image, not even like a tweet. It was just he tweets on that image. That was great. That was like shortly after he got out of prison, too. Yeah, he got arrested again. Yeah, I heard about that. So wait, is he still in prison or did he get out or jail or did he get out? I think he got released, but he was like not allowed to leave the country. Mm. And then something with like Aiden Ross saying yeah. that he was planning to leave the country or whatever. So then the Romanian people were like, yeah, you're you're arrested again or whatever. Something right. like that. I see. Yeah, Aiden apologized for that. He was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to like do that. Wait, and then apparently that- Tate still wants him to go there. I don't know. I don't. What prompted him to say that? I don't know. He's a retard. <laughs> He's kind of fucking retarded. Yeah. yeah. He got a call from his boys. They said, you need to do that. 
His oh, manager, yeah. if you will. Yeah, his manager. His manager, if you will, said, Aiden, I'm going to need you to say this. You know, it's 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 part of the plan. Okay. God's plan. Yeah. He called him on a radio on a on a on a walkie talkie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you got anything else you want to bring up or no, I think we're good. This was a good show. This was uh this was an interesting conversation, honestly. I know, you know, we, we have similar topics that we go over, but you know, that's what the audience wants, honestly. You know, they they need more in-depth conversations. They need more they need more substance and we give them substance. We don't just go one topic at a time and then never talk about it again. We go in depth, we give you the information, you know, we make sure that you are so grounded in reality that you know if you if you were anymore, you would just be reality itself. You would be you would be you would be God, okay? We're gonna we're gonna be so grounded in reality. You're gonna say, Mr. President, we don't want to be grounded in reality anymore. And I'm gonna say, no, we gotta keep going. We gotta keep getting you're more have grounded. So in reality. much reality, you're gonna get tired of reality. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get sick of it. Uh, yeah, don't be. A they schizo. come with reality. They come with reality. <laughs> <laughs> Chinese restaurants in the classical Greek uh, polis of Athens. It come with reality. It come with reality. <laughs> what would Trump say to Chinese restaurant? It come with winning. It come with winning. <laughs> we are right. so great. That'll be 842. 842. Is it 890? How much is it? It's like How much is the Chinese now. order? Huh? It's like 812. Yeah. That'll be 812, like, like 812. 12 bucks now. That'll be eight twelve. <laughs> okay, that was fine. You know, this has been the podcast, the podcast ever hosted by yours truly, Gregikis Mogikus Maximus, and Schlatt Ahmed. See ya.